Everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome as the room is filling up. I want to say happy, happy new year to everyone, every one of our coaches, students on the speakerfocus.com platform. You are the very reason why we broke some records in 2021. Some wonderful, amazing things happened at the end of 2021. <clears throat> I'm still not at liberty to tell you about all the wonderful things that are happening for me personally, for Austin personally, for speakerfocus.com. And you are such a, an amazing part of the journey. And we are definitely going to be taking it to new heights in 2022. Happy New Year to everyone out there on our platform and beyond, even the people who are looking at this video right now, who are thinking seriously about doing business with the world's number one platform for speaker marketing. The question is, why haven't you signed up yet? And what are you doing to accomplish your speaker goals and get your dreams to a whole nother level for the 2022 campaign? I must say that <clears throat> at the beginning of every year, it's a it's a personal triumph for me because you know January 1992 was a very monumental stage in my career personally. Before we jump into the Q and A, you all know what the deal is. As soon as I start seeing hands go up, I'm going to get right to the questions, and we're going to do whatever we got to do to get to your questions, answering any and everything pertaining to growing your speaker business. But for me, it's a personal triumph because I was in a real bad spot where I was able to turn my life around in 1992. Just like many of you, you have a story. You have many things that you have overcome. Your adversity has met you right in your face and you dealt with it and you were able to overcome. So 1992 was a very pivotal year. That marks 30 years of me changing my life around as a young man of 24 years of age. And, uh, and I was able to uh, overcome some insurmountable odds. I've been a professional speaker now, marks the 36th year, 2022 is the 36th year of me being in the speaking industry. And I must say, uh, every time you think it can't get any better, and, and this goes for your, your highest of your highs, and it also goes for the lowest of the lows. Every time you think it couldn't get any worse, I have experienced the worst in this industry and I've experienced the highest of the highs. Last year, I, I was able to accomplish some things personally and professionally that I never, I never dreamed of accomplishing. You don't set out to do all these, you don't set out to accomplish these amazing feats, these mind blowing things that you're able to accomplish in your life. You don't really set out for that to happen. And those of you who are sitting there saying, oh, I expected all of this, these things to happen. And, and these, like, you're lying. Like, you know, you, I'm just, I was just in it back in the day just so I could, you know, just inspire someone to be better. I was just in it so I could accomplish some wonderful things in my career. I just, as a little kid in Capitol Heights, Maryland, I used to look up at the planes in the sky. I just wanted to get on one of those planes and get out the hood, right? That's what I wanted. I never, I didn't, I didn't really think about how big it was going to get in the beginning. But as you start growing your speaker business, you start putting it together. If I had to go through a time lapse from year one through year 36, I mean, when you say it like that, when you say it like, where the hell did 30 years go of me being able to turn my life around? Then you add on another six years. And let me tell you something. The last six years have been the best of my life because I've met Austin Troyer. And, and, and this is not a sound bite for the media. Like, this is real. Like, you sit here and you think, you when you start getting, when you cross 50, you get into the bonus area. For a lot of us, we got family members who are sick. I'm going through it right now personally. And it hurts. It hurts to see your loved one deteriorate when they get older. But this is the life cycle, ladies and gentlemen. None of us None of us are going to get out alive and none of us live forever. So when you start getting 86 and you start pushing 90 and you've had a full life, you know, how are you going to sit there and feel sorry for a person who's had a full life and they did everything that they wanted to do? You've got to do everything you're trying to do in this life to build your speaker business and get it to where it is that you feel like it needs to be. I'm doing the steps. So, so 30 years ago, 
I was in a real bad spot, just, just personally, right? Because I was living reckless, but I turned my life around. That's a story for another time. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna get into that tonight, but the last six years have been the best six years of my life because I'm doing things that I didn't think I was capable of doing. I got control over my fear of technology. So now I'm teaching other speakers on our platform to deal with their fear of technology. It feels so good when you take an old school person where they say uh, you can't teach an old dog new trips, tricks. That is an absolute lie. You can. So for the for shout out for all the old school people on our platform. I'm not talking to you millennials right now. I'll deal with you another time. I'm talking about the old school people that's 50 and over. Yeah, when I get a chance to help those those students deal with their fear of technology because I had it too. I had it too. I was sitting right there where you are. And six years later, we got the world's number one platform for speaker marketing. We deliver the best service. We have the best curriculum. We have the best students. And not just any and everybody can get into this coaching program. So there's a reason why I said the last six years have been the best. It's been the most profitable spiritually. It's been the most profitable emotionally. It's been the most profitable financially. It's been the most profitable relationally. I have built literally a juggernaut in the last six years. Didn't know it was gonna go to this level, but guess what? Some of the best things in your life and some of your best highs that you're going to experience in 2022 simply come out of nowhere. That's what happens when you keep your head down, keep your mouth shut and do the work. So you're going to get more of what we've given you. The whole time speakerfocus.com has been in existence. You're going to get more accountability. You're going to get more uh, amazing curriculum. You're going to get more amazing Monday Q&A calls. I'm going to go even harder. I am going to break records like never before personally. And we're going to do that as a company as well. We're going to onboard new students and we're going to keep doing more of what we've been doing. Stand up in your face with the truth. You are going to do the work like always, and you're going to keep your head down. So in another three to six months, your speaker business will look totally different in the queue right now. By, by the way, I see all the shout outs in the it's a lot of them, so I can't get to all of them. But I see Ed Babcock is up first. Rafa Escobar is up second. Anita, you're up next. So let me go ahead and get to Ed. Ed, Ed, bless us with your knowledge, oh great one. You are, <laughs> you are the first. Yeah, that's the that's the greatest compliment I've had all year. <laughs> I miss you, hey Ed. It seemed like we've been gone for like two months, man. I miss you, brother. What's going on with you? Well, hey, we have these things called holidays. But uh, it was good. Hey, I loaded up uh, a couple questions in the Q and A. Okay. And um, I uh, basically it's about goal setting. Okay. Let me um, let me go into the chat real quick, Ed. Go okay. ahead. I'm listening to you. I uh, because it's that time of year. I'm mm -hmm. putting together my uh, <clears throat> plan, my business plan for this year, and what I want to accomplish. And uh, essentially, I have three questions. The first is yes, sir. great way to start uh, the call out, too, by the way, Ed. Great okay. way to set the tone for the Q&A. Go ahead. I'm listening. Oh, great. Question number um, one. If this if in this first year, uh, there's no if there, but I determined to receive thirty five hundred dollars per speaking gig, okay. is that reasonable? or should I have higher goals? And then part of that is uh, I plan to make 58,000 just from speaking this coming year. Okay. And then the next question is, uh, what should I set as weekly, monthly goal for the number of event planners that I reach out to? Mm -hmm. And then the third question is, <clears throat> What should I expect as uh, conversion ratios based on those numbers? In other words, you know, contacts, 
versus contracts. Okay. All right. So great way to set the tone. Let's go ahead and dive right in for the first one. And I do see your question in the chat box. So, okay. So first one is, uh, I determine if I determine to receive $3,500 per gig, is that reasonable or should I aim higher? Okay, so let's just tackle that right now. So Ed, remember, this is really all about having the proper pricing conversation. Right. You and your professional deliverables, you are in the corporate and association market. Right. So you should be striving for $5,000 USD for one hour or any portion of one hour. $7,500 for the half day program, which is two to four hours, $10,000 USD for the full day program, which is four to eight hours. Those should be your domestic fees plus business class accommodations, hotel and airfare for two. You should be requesting a $100 meal per diem each day to have you on site. Ground transportation should be luxury town car, SUV or limousine that picks you up to and from the home or tour city destination airport, uh, at home or tour city destination airport. And if you have to go speak outside of the United States, and for those students who are from other countries, if you have to go speak outside of your country of origin, all the fees double on all levels. Now, remember, Ed, these expenses do not apply when you are booking virtual engagements right. with the new Omicron and the new Delta variant. There are a lot of meeting planners that have retreated inward again, which is cool, but the meeting planning industry has never, ever stopped from the beginning. As soon as the pandemic went into a, uh, went into effect and everything started getting shut down, the meeting planner has had to learn to pivot just like the speaker. Now, Ed, that is the exact pricing conversation you should be having for the corporate and association market. Okay. So you can, I, I'd say about maybe 18 minutes into the video, go back in if you want the exact verbiage. This script, by the way, is, is right there on the platform with that exact verbiage to walk you through how to have the proper pricing conversation. Ed, I always say aim higher than lower because right. when you anything below $5,000 is typically low fee speaking. And the meeting planner is, an, is a professional negotiator. If you are not as professional as them, they are going to give you what they want you to have. Right. Your yeah. signature programs are outstanding. You are a premier leadership speaker, hands down, period. You're in the top 20% of leadership speakers that actually know how to transfer knowledge, deliver the value, actually have something that moves the meter both personally and professionally. You should not undercut or undervalue that. Now, you will get you will take less if you don't know how to have the proper pricing conversation. So you should go back and listen to the verbiage around 18 minutes into this Q&A call, and you should be memorizing that. So when you start doing outreach with your meeting planner, your conference coordinator, chair, board, or committee member, you are well-versed and you know exactly how to control the conversation. Remember, Ed, selling is not convincing anybody of anything. You are a premier speaker. You now have four signature programs that are outstanding. Your sales tools are amazing. Your website is outstanding. Your speaker video demo is amazing. Three to five minutes of some hot takes when it comes to leadership. It clearly lays out your value and your speaker info kit. You crushed it. Okay. You now have substantiated the value through your sales tools and the messaging. Now you have leverage. Am I, am I being clear about this? Uh, I'm hearing you. Okay. <laughs> so because you have the leverage, Ed, it takes a little bit of confidence just to start speaking like that. Like when I tell the meeting planner, my keynote is $50,000 USD for one hour. I'm not playing any games with that. Does it look like I'm, does it look like I'm playing when I ask for 50 K? It's no. just like, it's just like when I'm having a conversation about people who want to get into this coaching program, the fee is the fee. If I decide that, that, that I feel an extra special that day because I want to work with you and lower the barrier to entry. I do do that on occasions. It just depends on the situation of the person who I'm working with. But the top B, when you have leverage, you don't have to take less unless right. you want to. Why would we want to take less? 
So always start high. High fee speaking is about you standing your ground and it's not convincing them of anything. So the first thing I would say is stand strong. The corporate and association market is very capable of paying you at the high fee level of $5,000. Start high, Ed. Don't start low. Do not request $3,500 to start because you're actually worth the five. You're right. The only time you're supposed to accept $3,500 is if you know you have, ex I'm talking about exhausted every resource possible. And you realize that you're having one of these, you can't give blood from the turn up kind of conversations. Yep. Then you are going to say, okay, guess what? I clearly understand that the budget is just not there for the $3,500. If it starts feeling like you're getting too much friction, that means that they don't have the budget. So if they right. do have $3,500, you're going to take that because you're not going to walk away inside, <clears throat> excuse me, of your, your uh, speaker toolkit. I believe in module six, there is a speaker negotiating menu. Now, Ed, if you have to take, if you have to accept the $3,500, this is how you phrase it so that you save face and you still get the value. So you're going to refer to the speaker negotiating menu, by the way, everything in the speaker negotiated menu that they're going to choose from, you are going to take those bullets and insert them in your speaker engagement agreement. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. So before I get on the plane, if I decide I want to take less, and believe me, it's been a whole lot of times where I've had to take less before I start, uh, before I got to the $50,000 USD level for my keynote. <clears throat> so if you have to take less, you're going to say, okay, I am reinvesting $1,500 back into your company's event. I believe in the vision and the mission. And you're going to be sincere when you say this, mm -hmm. because when you walk away, you're not going to get anything. And to build your speaker business in the beginning of the higher fees, you're going to have to negotiate and you're going to have to talk to a lot of meeting planners and you're going to have to be flexible. That doesn't mean you speak for free. That doesn't mean you have to take a thousand dollars. You're just going to be flexible and not accept five. So in the instance where they have the $3,500, you're going to say, okay, I need a uh, $500 is going to be for pictures. Uh, another $500 is going to be three referrals of people in your industry that could potentially utilize my professional speaking services or hire me as a coach or consultant, <clears throat> excuse me. Maybe the other $500 is going to be testimonials that people are going to give you, whether or not that's written on stationary with the letterhead, or it's going to be under the signage for the particular event, or they're going to give you a video testimonial. Now, if I'm not getting the full $5,000, but I'm getting $1,500 $1, worth of publicity, oh, I also would say, okay, give me a, a quarter page ad in your trade publication for your conference. See, mm -hmm. that is, first of all, if it's a thousand people at the conference and everybody has one of those trade publications and my ad is in there, my ad is now going, this is why I love speaking to national conferences, Ed, because now when they don't want to give me everything I asked for, now I'm going to get my money's worth. Do you know how much free publicity that is? Because That's I huge. was just smart and I negotiated properly. Now I got my brochure going all over the world. That's how I got a chance to go speak overseas and, and do 37 plus tour dates overseas because somebody saw me speak in New York one time and they took my brochure home and they said, we want that guy to train our staff over in Italy. And Italy went to Greece and Greece went to North Africa and North Africa went to uh, France and France went to all. This is how it works. Right. But you got to be smart enough to be able to have the wherewithal. Now, Ed, you know my answers can be a little bit lengthy, but everyone else is going to no, be able that's to. No, that's exactly what I wanted. Yeah, no, no, it's okay. What, everyone, why, everyone. While you're on that, uh, KTR, yes. uh -huh. uh, you, you touched a little bit on, on virtual. You give me some ideas on virtual numbers. Okay. <clears throat> you are asking all the right questions to start out. Good. Proper, <laughs> thank you for your patience. Anita, thank you for your patience. I still see your hand up. But all of you need to be taking notes. Ed, I hear your pen wailing over there, bro. I can literally hear it on the paper. <laughs> okay. Squeaking. <laughs> yeah. It's on fire right now. Thank you so much for taking notes. Now, Ed, when it comes to the virtual part, that's a different negotiating tactic. 
a lot of speakers are literally diluting the market because they are speaking for free. They, they have no idea what they're doing when it comes to this industry. So you have all these non-premium speakers. Let me say that again, non-premium speakers. Ed, you are a premium speaker, period, okay? Whether or not you realize it or not, these non-premium speakers are saying, oh, I'll come speak at your event for free. Meeting planners are having a field day because they're just trying to get any and everybody just to get together and have these little summits. So these online conferences, this stuff is running rampant. They're actually charging speakers to come speak on platforms. So there are quality meeting planners who realize your value and exactly what it is. And they are willing to pay you at the 5,000 plus dollar level. And then you have the speakers that are saying, oh, I have a, watch this Ed. This is the wrong way to do your speaker business, by the way, everyone. I have a on-site fee and I have a virtual fee. No, my on-site fee and my virtual fee is the same exact value. So why the hell am I cutting it in half? Why am I taking a thousand dollars just to participate in your stupid ass mm -hmm. event? So I got a little excited, Ed, I apologize. Let me refocus. Do not, do not reduce your fee to a minimal and prostitute yourself because you don't have to. You actually have value in your signature programs and you don't have to do it. What you're going to learn and we're gonna teach you more in this year is attracting high fee coordinators to book a high fee speaker. This is why all these, these motivational or inspirational speakers, those are the ones, 80% of the YouTubers are diluting the market saying, I'll come speak for free. You know why? Because they don't have signature programs. They don't have any real value. They don't have any sales tools, so they have to talk too much. They have no leverage whatsoever because a speaker that has leverage doesn't need to take $1,000. A speaker that has leverage doesn't need to cut his fee in half. $3,500 is enough, but Ed, you're going to charge the same amount of money, whether or not it's virtual or whether or not it's on site. The meeting planner, listen to this, and this is a beautiful part about doing virtual engagements at this stage in the marketplace. Because the meeting planner, has had to go inward. They've had to pivot. They've had to get creative, Ed. Think about it. I don't have to fly 100 employees to Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas and put them up with show tickets, cover meal per diem, flights, room, all of that. <clears throat> I can bring in Ed Babcock. I can now pay him his fee. I can record the video and send it out to all my people. So those companies who are still not feeling comfortable through the Omicron and the Delta variant and in the rest of the pandemic spinning out. And by the way, let me just remind everybody, you're not as panicky and afraid as you were when the pandemic first started. 60% or more of, of, of people in the United States, whether or not you wanna take it or not, I don't give a damn what your view is, but people are vaccinated now, which means that we are fighting this thing better than we were when it first started. Listen to this, Ed, point number two. The meeting planner is now more trained and more skilled. None of us had skills to deal with the pandemic. Ed, am I making sense to you what I'm saying? Far, yeah. The meeting planner has more skill to book a speaker online, facilitate these transactions, save money for their organizations, and still get the value. So if I had to pay Ed Babcock $10,000 for a full day training program, and not have to spend 50000 in travel expenses to get all my team in one location. Do you think I'm actually saving money? Oh, yeah. So the virtual part isn't going to go away. This is great for speakers who are terrified to fly. This is great for speakers who are not vaccinated. Because believe me, those of you who are not vaccinated, you will pay the price for the meeting planner who wants you vaccinated. I see it happen every single day. Speakers are literally not getting booked the engagement because they want proof of vaccination. Just like how I was in New York, me and Austin checked out the Bucks in the Knicks game on December the 12th. Anybody entering into Madison Square Garden had to have proof of vaccination. This is the world that we live in now. Stop bitching and complaining. I talk to people all across the globe every single day part of this industry. I know what's going on because I'm in it. So Ed, you have a huge advantage. 
And the rest of you speakers need to understand what I'm saying to you because this platform is teaching you how to be a top 20% speaker. Ed, you were that actually before you got to us. You actually had the, the, the teaching ability, the knowledge transfer skill. You actually knew how to facilitate. All we did was tweak this, upgrade that, do this, Ed, do four signature programs, get the leadership thing going to a whole nother level. Boom, you did it all. These are the speakers that are getting the lion's share, the revenue, the ones that have the leverage. Ed, repeat after me, please. I, I have leverage. Have leverage. Now, Ed, explain to me why you have leverage. If I'm a meeting planner, explain to me why I need to be paying you at the, at the high fee level. I'm why? a professional speaker who brings the goods when I go to speak. People yeah. aren't buying a motivational message. They're buying substance. There you go. Now, now watch this. And remember, illustration beats conversation. You don't have to explain to them how amazing you are because I can read your four signature programs. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. Remember, selling is not convincing anybody of anything. It's proper positioning of your brand, which you're learning how to do with the outreach. And I'm going to get to your other two questions in a minute. Rafa and Anita, thank you so much for your patience, but Ed is setting the tone for the entire year. This is what you should be doing with your speaker business. This is a mindset. I have leverage because I have the four signature programs. Proper positioning of the brand and presentation of the facts. Now, vir virtual fee and on-site fee is the exact same. These people out here cutting deals, saying that I'm going to come speak at your event for $1,000. They have no leverage. They have no idea what they're doing. They don't have any signature programs. They have no sales tools. They have to talk too much. I can guarantee that they're, they're in broke, begging, and desperation mode. See, you got to be willing to say no. A successful person in this industry has the ability to say no. When you get better at lead generation, you don't have to hold your breath away for one meeting planner because that's how you fall into a trap because you only got one or two meeting planners that want to book you to speak. So nothing else is coming in. So you feel like you got to take less. No, I tell them to go take a hike, go find, you want to find, you, you want somebody to speak for a thousand dollars, go find you a thousand dollar speaker. It's, a, it's dozens of them online. Now, Ed, did you have any other questions about part number one for your answer about? No, you, no, that piece? was, that was a great answer. Okay, thank now you. wait a minute. I, I do want to, let me just, well, thank you. I just want to tackle the back end of that. So let's talk about some sales goals, Ed, because this is where a lot of people make a grave mistake in the speaking industry. You don't set any goals for yourself. Right. Ed, if you're the worst I've ever seen in my life, and you see examples of people doing outreach and they're doing like, you know, Austin recommends you do at least 30 coordinators a day, whether or not that's the, that's the, the organic LinkedIn strategy or whether or not you're sending out emails. So let's say you're the worst I've ever seen on our platform and you only attract one a day. That's seven a week. And you, you, you close one out of seven. That's a pretty decent ratio. Yeah. If you just do that once a week at five grand. Now you're looking at adding an additional revenue of $20,000 worth of revenue to your business model every single month. That is extremely easy to do as a speaker. Now, Ed, I would say, you have got to be able to win by attrition and sales is all about uh, remember a sales funnel is all about you putting a lot of people in at the top yep these people filter in through that little gap at the bottom those are the people that actually schedule strategy calls you may have 200 meeting planners up here and then the ones that filter through the bottom are the ones that actually book a call so let's say you have 200 meeting planners at the top, right? Of the sales funnel. Yep. They're booking calls and only maybe, you, let's say you got 10%. So that's 20 meeting planners that actually schedule a call. Well, out of the 20, if you book two, that's pretty great. Let's say you only get one at five grand. These are quality meeting planners who are desperate for the right kind of leadership speakers because we don't need another I have a dream message. They're sick of motivation and inspiration up to here because that's what everybody's doing. Ed, 
when you keep presenting the market with something, it's it's like a um, it's like a recording artist. Like uh, when a new recording artist comes out and they get really, really hot, I'm talking about on fire. They're the number one. It, it happens to all of them. It happened to Michael Jackson. You literally get sick of looking at that artist. You hear their song yeah. so much, you get sick of it. And this is what's happening with the world of motivation and inspiration. Every time you turn around, there's some 21 year old life coach saying he could change your life. There's some coach screaming at the screen, telling you how much they could change your life. They're telling you what to do, but very few actually show you how to do it. So the ones who can show you how to do it like me, that's why I'm number one. I'm the best. I get the most money because I'm, I give the best information. And Ed, when you give the best information, you separate yourself away from every little run of the mill speaker in the marketplace. And that allows you to substantiate and justify your value as a speaker. I don't need to tell you how fabulous I am. You, you can look at all the social proof. A real meeting planner who books speakers at the $5,000 plus dollar level, they know exactly what they're looking at. And believe me, when they look at you, they know they're looking at a professional of the first order. It ain't nothing else to talk about now. Ed, if they feel like you can't deliver the goods or you're not the right fit, you simply say, next. Let me go to the next meeting planner who is suffering, struggling, they have deficiencies, limitation. Your entire staff is broke down. You're collapsed mentally. You're drained. You're burnout. You have diversity inclusion issues, LBGTQ plus issues, and I could go on and on and on. Time management issues, organizational skills. You have a lack of resources. Yet your signature programs are going to come in and help them fix every single last bit of it. Mm -hmm. Meeting planner, who has the value? And you don't want to try to pay me my five thousand dollars. See, Ed, when they you you deal with rebuttals, and then I'm going to come back to you setting a hard sales goal because this is very doable. Five, I mean, four speaking engagements at five grand every month is very doable. You got to ramp up your outreach in order to get there. So remember, when the meeting planner says to you, "Well, we can't afford you, or we don't have that," okay, well, you said that you were hemorrhaging high turnover at an average cost of $50,000 per employee. Let's say you had 10 employees. That's $500,000 going out the door every single month. Ed, it takes three times the salary to replace one employee to properly train them up over a six month to a year period, three times the salary. So you're not hemorrhaging 500,000, you're hemorrhaging 1.5 million. Right. But you're telling me that you don't have the budget to pay me 10,000 to stop the bleeding? I tell you this, let me use a medical analogy real quick. One time my dad had to get medevac to the hospital. He had his gallbladder ruptured. They had to, he had sepsis, which is blood poisoning. So they couldn't see inside his stomach. He wasn't given much of a chance to live. So the doctor says, we got to go in and do exploratory surgery. If we hadn't given him permission to do the surgery, it wouldn't have saved his life, but it did. And as soon as they went in and cleaned out all the blood and figured out his gallbladder rupture, they snatched the gallbladder out, all his organs start working again, saved his life. I am a doctor, Ed, and I'm here to save the meeting planner's ass, whether or not they recognize it or not. Now, mm -hmm. the bottom line is if you know how to out negotiate them, you're going to win every single time. And the ones who don't want to pay the fee, the ones who don't act like, they're, act like they're not interested in hiring me, I have so many leads, I simply say next, and I literally forget about you. I mean, yep. when your sales funnel is strong, you can re you literally can replace these meeting planners who are not serious about being in the Ed Babcock business. But let me tell you something. They, they're, they're desperate. They need quality speakers, the ones who know what they're doing. Now, Ed, let's, let's set some sales goals here because okay. this is important. Because if you, if you just say, I want to make 58 grand, okay, that's a good number. So how many speaking engagements do you need to get in order to make 58,000. Sounds to me like you only need at, at five grand, you only need maybe what, five to, to 10? Well, for, at five grand, that changes everything. Yeah, at five grand, I'm becoming, you, you may need, you may need 10 to 15 speaking engagements to make 50,000, 58,000. Yep. Okay, let's move on to the next part of the question. What should I say as a weekly, monthly goal for event planners to reach out to? Okay, 
Austin recommends that you reach out to at least 30 coordinators every single day. Now, if you don't, if you have a nine to five job, if you don't have that kind of time, then I'd say if you can start doing one to five every day, that's the minimal. You start, you start talking to meeting planners and you start hearing what the needs are. Listen to the marketplace. These meeting planners are still moving forward and booking speakers left and right. You just have to be in the lane of the speakers who are getting the bookings. And there's a clear reason why speakers are getting bookings versus the ones who are not. So with that being said, remember, set a real goal for yourself. Ed, I would tell you to double whatever your, whatever your goal is. If you're talking about 60K, I'd say double it. You need to be focusing on $120,000 worth of speaking engagements this year. You need to get really, really good at outreach over the next 60 days. You need to stay really close to Austin in the next 60 days. You need to be sending a lot of support tickets. You need to you need to, uh, you need to figure out how your sales funnel is put together, what, what kind of CRM that you chose to operate. How are you doing your outreach? What message that you're sending out through your outreach? When the coordinator starts booking you, what does your lead magnet look like? What does your marketing language look like to get them on the call? Send that over to us. Let us review it. Yep. Because what you're doing with it is you're tinkering with it. You're making adjustments on the fly, trying to find the right verbiage. It's going to get them to schedule a call with you and then actually get them on a call and walk them through the process of a needs assessment, seeing if it's a good fit, then sending them over, making sure they got your speaker video demo. They looked at your website. They looked at all of your sales tools, holding them accountable and setting a follow-up call with them to see if them or the rest of the chair board or committee members just get their opinion about what they thought about your sales tools see if you are in fact a great leadership speaker and will be a good fit for their program and you're going to be they're going to be a good fit for you once you know it is boom you start negotiating communication is negotiating so always keep the meeting planner engaged always when they're when they're returning your calls that's a great sign that they want to hire you to speak when they're responding to your emails that's a great sign when they're responding to your text messages that's a great sign when they're giving you feedback off the sales tools that you sent to them that's a great sign when they have a date to offer you on your calendar, whether or not it's a virtual, whether or not it's, it's on site, whether or not they have a venue to speak, whether or not it's virtual or on site, and they have a budget. Those are the three things of how you know that they're serious about hiring you as a professional speaker. So what's your sales goal for this year, Ed? My income goal is yes. uh, 120,000. Okay, so how many speaking engagements do you need to need to do at 5K to reach 120,000? Just to I buy that up real quick. I think it's uh, about two a month. Okay, so that's what you need to be striving for. Now, to do that kind of outreach to get two a month, if you do one, if you do one to five coordinators every single day, let's say five times seven is what? Uh, thirty-five. <laughs> yeah. So you got you got you got thirty-five times four, and then that's how many coordinators that you're at least reaching out to. Now, remember, you win by attrition. All of them aren't going to schedule a call. That's not what sales is about. You just are worried. You just are concerned about the ones who filter through the bottom and actually schedule a call. If you get 20 to schedule a call and you close two, most people can walk away from their job closing one. Yep. And that's what we're committed to helping you do. Now, Good. So let's go to the last final question. Oh, I already told you about the conversion ratio. You should expect at least to start out with, you should be expecting at least a five to 10% conversion ratio. If you, if you're talking to 20 coordinators in a month, you should be able to convert two of those. No way you're going to close them all. That's not how it's supposed to work. But if you can close five to 10%, that is a great, listen, what you want to do, Ed, you want to put the meeting planner in a difficult position to tell you no. Yep. And the way you do that is provide massive value. D exactly what you have done to build your speaker business out, get the infrastructure tight. You're put, you're making it very difficult for them to say, we don't want to pay them this $5,000. See, the people that see the value, they're going to go find the money. Mm -hmm. 
that's how it works. When they don't see the value, they like, okay, no, nah, we'll move on to somebody else. Yeah. So the goal is to find enough meeting planners who want to be in the Kevin T. Robertson business or the Ed Babcock business, and then you work with those. And then the rest of them, watch this. Now you still got them in your CRM. You're still going to create top of mind awareness, and you're going to create multiple touch points. They're going to be on your email list that you're going to send out a couple times a month. You're going to be sending them value videos. You're going to stay in touch with them. The speakers who stay in touch and top of mind are the ones that get the bookings later down the line. If you don't, a no today in this business doesn't mean no forever. Mm -hmm. So when they tell you no, you keep them on your list. Keep managing your relationship with them. When they have you on their mind, top of mind awareness is what is called TOMA. When they're ready to make a purchasing decision and they're thinking about you because they keep seeing your retargeting ads all the time, you, you're the one to keep reaching out to them, giving them value, willing to answer free questions, by the way. Uh, handwritten notes to meeting planners are a great way to stay in contact with them, not just email. See, these are all things that help you separate yourself away from the competition. I'll send them a little friendly gift card to Starbucks. You'd be surprised at what a $5, $20 gift card, $25 gift card to Starbucks will make somebody's day. You know what they'll be thinking? Damn, we didn't hire him for our last conference. But you know what I remember? He gave me that damn $25 gift card. Yeah. When, when I was I was scraping two dimes together trying to figure out how I was going to get me uh, a Frappuccino. And I remember Kevin, he's always willing to ask, ask questions. He calls me and checks in on me. He actually cares. Yeah. Ed, you and I, we come from the same call, brother. You have all kinds of goodness inside of you. And the world is about to see it all. There's nothing wrong with helping people and being profitable at the same time. Did you have That's any right. other questions? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, do I have more questions? Yes. I just haven't been able to form them yet. <laughs> no problem. Ed, keep the support. That was really good. Coming in. Uh, I appreciate it, Ed. You know, th th these master classes come out of people that ask really good questions. You set the tone for the entire year because this is what you're supposed to be speaking at, speaking about. At this stage in the game for you, you've done everything we've asked you to do. You've built out a solid infrastructure. You just you just really enhance what was already there. And now, now it's time to put it to the test and, and go to market and start yep. doing outreach. And you're going to find out exactly what your speaker business is made of when you start doing outreach. But the, but the confidence that you should have on your side is that you're, you're going to put the meeting planner in a difficult position to tell, you no. Know. Yep. And it's, it's, it's almost impossible to walk away from when you are helping people solve their problems. They, you're just not going to do that. Yep. You're not. And that's the mindset that you need to have in order to remain uh, in order to remain in a position where you have leverage. So, Ed, I love you, brother. Great. Uh, thank you so much Likewise. for setting the tone and uh, keep getting those support tickets in there. When you get the outreach set up, let us know what software you chose. Let us know what yep. CRM you're using. Let us see the verbiage that you're sending out. Run. Let me tell you something. Austin is so underutilized and you can't afford not to be yep. reaching out to him on a regular basis. OK. Yep. I'm right there this week. Yes, sir. Be talking to you real soon. Thank you. Okay. You're very welcome. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, if you, if you believe <laughs> that these other little punk ass speaker coaches out here are even capable of, of breaking this business down on this level, well, I apologize. Rafa was next, and then Anita is next. Anita, I apologize. Let me go ahead. I got to. I got to disable. I got to lower your hand real quick. Rafa, are you there? Yep, I'm there. Okay, Rafa. Yeah, let me let, let me just say this before I jump in uh, with Rafa. I'm gonna be more shrewd this year. I don't. I'm I'm putting all of them on notice. I don't give a damn about all the rest of you speaker coaches. You're trying to inbox me. You're trying to be buddy buddy. I'm not your friend. I have a responsibility to the people on our platform. I don't know why you don't deliver service on your platform. I, I get people ask me these questions every single day. I don't know why these people are not taking an in-depth analysis of helping you grow your speaker business. Number one, if you haven't delivered over 2,700 paid speaking engagements like me, perhaps you just don't have the wherewithal to talk to somebody on, a, on another level. Uh, perhaps, I don't know. Maybe you didn't grow up eating fried bologna and cheese sandwiches and you don't come from the gutter like I did. And you don't have the guts or the balls to just talk real with people 
because somebody is putting their dream in your possession. I got to get some shit off my chest. Give me a minute. Perhaps, because I'm sick of answering these questions with new students of why these things aren't happening on these other platforms. I don't know why. I don't know why, but, but, but you got to be built for this. You got to be built for speaking. You got to be built for coaching. And you have a responsibility to the people who you are serving. And I serve at the highest level because I actually care. Now, if you're going to care, some of the stuff I say to you is going to hurt. It's going to ruffle your feathers a little bit. Maybe you're not going to like the way it sounds. I'm not here to be friends with you. I'm here to get you some results. You're very wise to take notes and listen to me because I can guarantee you I've messed it up with the top 1% of people in this business. And that's why I know what the hell I'm talking about. So now, with that being said, Rafa, how's the baby? <laughs> <laughs> Man, what a corner you turned there. <laughs> she's doing great, bro. Thank you. All she's is getting good big. Hey, Rafa, she's getting yeah. big, bro. Yeah. She She's starting to make noise. She's like 10 weeks old, man. Like watching her come alive. She smiled for the first time. I think it was like two to three weeks ago. And let me bro, tell you I that. Saw just, I saw it. You, yeah. got a, you got a picture. You got a picture of her smiling right there on, on your IG. Yeah, bro. That shit changed my life. It was like. Seeing the little reflection of you smile in, in your eyes, it just did something where it just made everything all right. <laughs> you know what it I mean? Does. Hey, hey, Rafa, but, but, but listen to me, bro, because I know you're in go hard mode right now, and, and I'm, yeah. I'm going to shut up and let you ask this question. It happened to me when my granddaughter was born about four, okay. four years ago. Like the part of KTR that was real hard and shrewd or what, bro, I got soft. Like a, yeah. a little girl will just literally, bro, they will turn you into a bowl of jelly. I don't even understand <laughs> how it happens, but I should just be crying for no reason, bro. I mean, I'm not ashamed to admit it, but Rafa, right. you, you, you got to have a paradigm shift. I know your daughter's making you a little soft, but bro, you, you got to reclaim, you got to reclaim the hardness, bro. Cause we got to go get this money this year. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah, a hundred percent. And let me tell you something that that has been the biggest shift in my life is accessing that soft side while still remembering what the go-getter is like you know what i mean and finding a balance of the two on a daily basis yeah so save the soft I side for the baby nobody else gets the soft side <laughs> they, they would let me tell you something about the world of business they will literally eat you alive if they even think that you're soft and they think that you don't know how to negotiate and bro these meeting planners are skilled negotiators they got yeah. okay they got to they gotta cut a deal with Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas. They got to cut a deal with some of the biggest venues in the world. Some of these bigger, some of these bigger meeting planners, they do multi-million dollar productions. What do you think is going to happen when you don't come in there prepared? They're going to slap you around and give you a thousand dollars just because they feel like it. Right. They got the budget. You yeah. just have to be able to know how to extract it out of them without begging. So it's okay. Right. Save the soft stuff for your family. Everybody else, anybody else can get it on any day of the week. You got it? Yeah. Yeah. You, you know what? I don't know. I don't know how you knew I needed that message. I didn't even know I needed that message, but you're right. Because the way I've been in business up until now has just been, I bring a lot of that softness to it. And it's not that I'm trying to tear people apart, but I got a side of me that needs to be heard. You know what I mean? And it needs to get out there. And I'm learning how to calm it down and be poised and be professional but be stern and be and know what i'm worth you know what i mean and well, be confident and to step outside the doors and know who i am and leave the heart inside the house yeah, <laughs> you exactly. know? okay so 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 watch this so I, I just used this example a little earlier when i was talking um to miss tina marie speaks and i and i and i was with me and tina were talking about something about uh we don't want to hear of the the, the run-of-the-mill average stuff anymore about people's goals and forget about all that new year's resolution stuff just get in there and do the work you don't need to come up with anything new so i was talking to her about being shrewd and typically michael jackson and shrewd don't go into the same sentence right but think about it michael jackson was very kind-hearted so are you rafa so am i right well michael jackson was on a video shoot with paul mccartney for say 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 and Paul McCartney just mentioned to him that the Beatles catalog may be up for sale. As soon as Paul McCartney turned his back, Michael Jackson was on the phone with his attorney and bought that Beatles catalog for $700 million. And it's worth billions of dollars. That's a shrewd move, bro. 
Yeah. Just because he's soft spoken and because he's kind hearted didn't mean that Michael Jackson would break his foot off in your ass to get some paper. Now you don't have to be, see, watch this. Shrewd sounds a lot like rude. Doesn't it Rafa? Yeah. You don't have to be rude in order to do business. You just need to know what the line is. And your speaker business is no different from any other business in the world. It's a product or service that you, that you're providing. And when you do it at a high, when you do it at a high level, you should be getting a high fee. So s- save the soft stuff for your family. Yeah. If you're closest of compadres, nobody yeah. else gets that side, that tenderness side. When it comes time, I had to tell a lady today, I have to tell, I have to remind people about this every single day, bro. Don't you understand? They're out here testing you. Yeah. It's just, it, Rafa, it's just like it is. When I was in the hood, I remember people used to try to roll up on you and take your bike. Right. They used to try to punk you for your lunch money, for your bike. If you let them take it, they were going to do it every day. Right. So there's a part of doing. See, we teach you how to be a well-rounded entrepreneur on this platform. Yeah. yeah. Because they will try you. I had a lady today. She said, this is exactly what she told me. She said, well, she said, KTR, I understand. I've been looking at your videos for months. I love the, the Q and A uh, calls. I could, I could clearly see your value. Now she says this shit to me on one hand and on the other hand, she says, well, I'm busy right now. I don't, I don't, really have, I don't really have time. Like I could probably do the Q and A calls, but can't you just charge me for the Q and A calls and charge me as I go along? I said, yeah. I said, miss, that's, that's like saying you're a little bit pregnant. You either, <laughs> you either are or you aren't. Right. Right. See, what, what she wanted to do, she she just wanted to get some foreplay going without without going all the way. And right. with me, you're gonna go all the way, or you ain't gonna do nothing. You can stay. Watch this, Rafa. So I told her, I said, you can stay right where you are. I don't give a damn whether or not you sign up or not. I told her straight up. Maybe a lot of you, I, I told you that as well. I don't give. Yeah. A, I got three hundred people a day that want me to be their speaker coach and want to be on our yeah. platform with credit cards in their hand. I don't care because I'm skilled at lead generation. That's right. I can talk shit because I work with Austin Troy. Mm. And when you built a marketing machine the way we have, you don't have to put up with any shit from any prospects whatsoever. And this mm. is what I want all of you to get good at. I want you to exude this kind of confidence. See, for right. a person who doesn't understand marketing, this comes off as arrogant or cocky. I don't give a damn what you think about me. The bottom line is you are not going to try to piecemeal it to me when I'm giving you my all. And that's what right. this lady thought she could do. You know why? Because she's used to cutting these kind of deals with these other little punk ass speaker coaches out here. And she's getting her way until she until she shows up on my doorstep. Right, right, right. And I have to tell right. her that you're gonna actually put in some work. You're going to be held accountable. She didn't like it, Rafa. First, she was trying to double talk me, over talk me. I said, you know what? You know what I'm feeling about you? I don't think you're a good fit for our platform. But I send you the follow up video anyway, and then you could just look at it. But I said, I said, this is the last I want to leave you with this. I said, and mark my words. Speakers like you. In another six months, in another year, you're going to be broke down like a vehicle with no battery, four flat tires and in an engine that's, that's just blown. You're not going anywhere. Right. Because you want you want to just get on the stage and grab the mic without doing the work. And that's the reason why you're going to remain a motivational or inspirational speaker. And you will never become a professional speaker. She said, right. oh, right. Well thank, well, thank you for telling me that, Kevin. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, Yo, I'm, I'm saying like, I understand what you're saying because I've been searching for that confidence, but you just made me realize something about it is that it comes with the work and you've been saying it every day since the beginning. And I feel my confidence growing and growing. And the only way that you could sit across from somebody and mm-hmm. have that kind of assertiveness and give them that kind of message is if on the back end, you're working with Austin Troyer and you got that lead generation. You, you yes. It's not that you're disregarding them, but you're confident in what you're doing. You have a system and you can move forward from there, right? So you're not desperate. You're not begging because there's other options. And it, I, uh, I heard this, Kobe said this. Kobe said, if I got to beg you to get into the gym, we got a problem. You know what I'm saying? And that's how a lot of people are. Like, they want it and they'll say it, 
but they're not willing to put in the work. And what we yes. came here for was to put in the work, which is why you got to be at these calls. And it's, it feels good to be on here for an hour or two, but then when it's Wednesday at 7 a.m. and you got to wake up, it's like, yo, are you going to get there or not? <laughs> and exactly. a lot yeah. of people- hey, Rafa, let yeah. me, since, since you gave a Kobe analogy, uh, I, I want to jump in here with a that that yeah. Mamba that Mamba mentality. Kobe Kobe used to always tell this to the rookies or the players that didn't have a lot of experience in the league. He said, "Okay, y'all y'all want to bond." And Kobe was a loner, just like Michael Jordan. They were shrewd. Right. They 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 were there to gut you like a fish, bro. Play right. up to you like their friends or whatever, then drop fifty on your ass at the <laughs> garden. You know. Real so Co yeah. Kobe said, "Okay." Y'all want to be buddy, buddy? Okay, I ain't really for all of that, but I'll hang out with y'all. You want to go out and have a drink? You want to go at, at the club? Okay, I'll hang out with you. We hang out till 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. But, uh, but understand this. I'm going to be banging on your door at 5 o'clock in the morning. I'm right. already going to be in the gym full sweat. I've already, I've already shot a 1,000 jumpers. I've already lifted weights before everybody else comes in. But when I come bang on your door, are you going to be there to go to the gym or you still gonna be asleep. Right. See, this right. is what this boils down to. Are you willing to put the work in? Right. And there's a there's a lot of people that simply don't want to put the work in. I'm not looking right. for it to be easy for me. I never have, I never will. I'm always looking to do my fair share to do my part. And this is all you got to do. And Ralph, I want to go back to something because you weren't always at this mindset when you first started this coaching program. I had to get mm -hmm. on your ass about at least 10, 12, 15 times. Remember, Rafa, yeah. you just want the microphone in your hand, bro. You just want to go right on stage and get and get the work done. But you started listening. And what you just said helped me understand that you get it. You yeah. said when you start doing the work, this business starts talking to you differently. You know that you got your little, you got your, well, I don't, well, well yeah, Austin is younger than you. So you got your little brother, Austin, and your older brother, KTR. You got the speaker focus family behind you. So yeah, yeah, is that gonna give you more confidence because you realize that you aren't looking like a clown like a lot of these speakers are? Listen, bro, I don't mean to disrespect people when I say they're looking like a clown with the way they market themselves, but I, if I'm gonna point the finger at anybody, I pointed at myself first. What I was doing for the first right. seven years of my career was clownery right. in the speaking industry. I didn't know any better. Way too much right. ego involved. I didn't know how to really operate a business and I didn't understand marketing. So I was very self-promoting like the majority of these speakers are and they simply don't understand that the work comes in. See, confidence comes from doing. Repetitions is what gives you the confidence to say, I'm better at marketing. You don't have to put up with this stuff from these meeting planners. You don't have to cut these kind of deals at these speakers out in the marketplace who are diluting this industry that I love so much. They're going to be gone, by the way. I give them a, another six months. All that shit's going to get cleared out. Wait until things start getting back to better and above normal. And a lot of places they are. I don't give a damn about the Omicron, Delta variant. It doesn't matter. People are still doing yeah. events live. As long as you got your vaccination card, people don't give a damn. They want to move the meter and they're still doing events. Now, as a speaker, right. you got it's a personal call. Do I want to go speak at the event? that are this this requiring a vaccination card uh you know do i do i want to do virtual events it's totally up to you just get the work done because i don't give a damn if you're doing on-site or virtual you still have to present your business to the meeting planner and my job is to make sure that your ass is prepared right don't talk right. to me don't talk to me about booking any speaking engagements unless you didn't done everything i asked you to do on this platform to start doing outreach Period. Yeah. I want to hear about it. You need to go back to the lab and keep doing what you got to do until you start doing outreach. Because I'm going to tell you, and some of you, you could try to cut some corners if you want to, but when the meeting planner literally buses your, splits your shit from here to here, <laughs> you get punched in your face. Yeah. And you're gonna, it's, it's a sunken feeling. It's the most horrible feeling in the world. When you are not prepared, when the meeting planner actually wants to pay you some money and they and they really figure you out as the fraud that you are because you really don't have the value, man, it is, oh my God, you talk about, it's one of the worst feelings in the world. I right. you don't have to feel like that. Get your shit together yeah. and present your business the right way. Robert, did you have another yeah. question? 
Well, I do got a question here. Let me just say this, Kato. I haven't got uh, the only reason, the primary reason why I'm at this place is because of your guidance, because of your coaching. And knowing that I got you here on Mondays provides this certainty about my business because I know that if I get stuck, I got support. And uh, for a while there, I was looking for someone to do the work for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now I'm, I'm in a gear where it's like, no, nah, bro, this is on you, but I'm loving it. I'm enjoying every step and I'm feeling right. the confidence come in. And that's in large part, not only to the platform, but to your coaching. So I come to you with a question. I'm, I'm yes. at a point where I'm creating, I've started module five and I'm creating the 30 minute training video, right? Which will serve as for the meeting com, uh, meeting coordinators to look at. Yes. And I, I originally had a, a thought in my head as to how I wanted to lay it out and present it. Mm-hmm. But then as I'm going through it and thinking about it, I started to think back at some of the training videos that I've watched before. And I remembered the training video that you put together that you sent me to join the speaker focused program. Yes. And I watched every minute of that. And as I watched it, I was like, oh, this guy knows what he's talking about. This guy, the way he laid it out, mm-hmm. the way the problems he's going to solve. So as I'm looking at that, I'm like, I don't want to feel like a cheater, but I, w- I would like to use that framework. And I would like to use kind of the way you did that 30 minute video with my own verbiage and my own speaking points, because what I realized that you did there is you opened up the presentation, you set out five points, and then you're talking about them. You're following a formula. And mm-hmm. rather than going to my own head, I was wondering if it's okay if I just look at that video and kind of put my own verbiage and create my own slides based off of, of what you did. Yeah, okay, cool. Of course it is. Why, Bro, why wouldn't you want to do that? I keep telling all of you, you need to do every single thing Austin Troyer recommends to you and more. You need to follow it to the letter. The only thing he ever does is convert revenue, uh, convert prospects or information into revenue. That's yeah. what he does. Yeah. That's what he does. That is his job. That is his gift. That is what he's skilled at. Man, do you, yeah. do you understand that Austin's information has literally generated millions and millions and millions of dollars. His consultation and advice alone has, has got people for up for billion dollar evaluations for their companies. Yeah. This yeah. is no joke. <laughs> yeah. This shit is for real. Okay, so, so yes, you're supposed to follow the template. That's called a, a video sales letter, VSL, by the way. I filled right. out a client avatar first. And then I, I follow every single step, took my knowledge about the speaking industry, and I knew what was missing in the coaching industry. It was full of a lot of what, but it wasn't full of a lot of how. I clearly saw that none of these other speakers out here didn't have the guts enough to present like me. And I just went all the way in. I just gave, I just gave him KTR right from the beginning. Austin was like, oh my God. He said, man, this shit is amazing. Yeah. All I, all I did was follow exactly what he told me to do. And we put it out there and they start converting immediately. Not everybody sells funnel converts because they don't understand what they're doing when it comes to analytics and data and things of that nature. But that's why you should listen. You should be binge watching module number five. For those of you who are ready to do outreach, you should be listening to everything Austin Troyer is telling you and you should rewind it. You should memorize it. You should know it like your favorite song. Okay. Now, you, let me ask you something that, that, that BSL. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Before you ask me that question, did you hear what I said? Yeah, I should be binge watching that. What's your favorite <laughs> I'm song? Just so excited. What's your favorite song? What's your favorite song? Right now, uh, it's Nipsey Hustle, Ocean Views. Do you know every, every lyric to that song? Do you know the Just hook? about, yeah. Okay, well, well, I'm asking you to go in and learn module five like you know that Nipsey Hustle song. That's what I'm saying to okay. you. Okay. That's how you got, you got to get committed. You got to commit this shit up here. Repetitious learning, brother. This is what this is about. What do you think? I'm pulling these strategies out my ass every day. Yeah. I, got, I literally got millions of bits of data catalog everywhere in my brain. This is why those of you who do not, if you have not read the book, you need to go cop Steven Pinker's How the Mind Works, leading authority at MIT for years. He wrote a book called How the Mind Works. It breaks down your brain in all these different regions, and each region is responsible for a different function. I know how to catalog data in my brain based upon repetition 
log it in, memorize it. And when I hit the recall button, it pops up just like that. Why do you think I got all these stories for you? Why do you think I got all these strategies? Why do you think I know how to play around with this stuff and customize it for each one of you when you ask me a question? This is what the meeting planner is going to do to you. What are you going to do? The cat going to get your tongue? You can't afford to be a professional speaker and the cat got your fucking tongue. Are you serious? Yeah. You got to hit the recall button, brother. You got to come up with this information and fast. How do you do that? Practice repetitions. You got to do a massive amount of research. You got to hit the recall button. And what pops up after you hit the recall button? Resources. If no resources pop up, you don't have any value. What's your last question, Rafa? And I'm going to get to Anita. Anita, I still see your hand up. Thank you for your patience. Yeah, Yo, thank you for that. I needed that shit. <laughs> um, but the, the VSL, that script that you mentioned, yes. is that something that's found in the, in the uh, module five? No, or is that, that is something not in module you guys five. Use? That is not, that okay. is not on the coaching platform at all. You're talking about some higher level digital marketing. If you want it, Rafa, I'll send you, I'll send you my copy. I'll send, you this, I'll send you the copy that I sent to Austin that allowed us to convert uh, Man, I, I, I'm I would love that. Hundreds of thousands of leads and run a multi million dollar sales funnel. I will send you the exact script. You're more than welcome to take from the script and then send me over your verbiage when you swap out the verbiage. Now, if I see anything about focus in there, if I see if I see any of the cadence that I use for my brand, I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, put some. You, all you're gonna see is strike throughs through it, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you redo it. If it comes too close to what it is that I'm doing with my brand, I'm gonna tell you to change it. But you're more than welcome to borrow the other verbiage as, as much as you want. Bro, that would be perfect because the reason why I was feeling like a cheater is because I was listening to it and literally writing down every single word. It's and I was gonna- No, it's not okay. cheating. It's, 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 it's a formula, brother. This right. is what happens. This, why do you think the same people, you see the same ads all the time? Why do you think you see Alex Becker, Sam Ovens, Ty Lopez, Grant Cardone, the list goes on and on and on. Why do you think you see, why do you think you keep seeing the same ads? Because it's only a handful of people in this space that actually know what the hell they're doing when it comes to converting data and 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 running uh, traffic. Yeah, absolutely. And Austin Troyer is one of them. And 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 we and me and Austin are two of them. Yeah. Because I learn I learned from him. See, just like yeah. all of you are green when it comes to technology, I was sitting right in your same position six years ago. Right. Try, I, I knew I could get it to a whole nother level, but I didn't understand the data and the analytics and Facebook advertising, YouTube pre-roll ads, Google AdWords, Snapchat, TikTok, LinkedIn, Instagram, free organic outreach through email. I didn't understand how to manipulate the, um, the, the, the outreach through LinkedIn. I didn't understand what kind of video needed to be recorded. I didn't mm. understand a video sales letter. I didn't understand a client avatar. I didn't understand really delivering the value, packaging my value as a coach. I didn't understand that until I met mm. Austin Troyer. Mm. And all of them come from the same coaching tree. All of us, all, all of us, all of us come from Sam Ovens. All of you, you, you look at you look at the people making millions of dollars. The ones who are rocking it, they all come from the same coaching tree. Alex Becker, um, uh, uh, all of them came from Sam Ovens and a whole lot of other people to do it at a real high level. I mean, but you yeah. gotta buy into these masterminds for ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars. How you think we learn how to do this stuff? Yeah, you, you know what? I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna pay my humble respects and say thank you for paving the way. I bought a Sam Oven course and a Ty Lopez course five years ago, and I never finished them. And I don't say that with regret. It's just what was waiting for me was Austin Troyer and KTR. Go back I mean? in there. Go, go for the first one you need to look at. You need to go back in there and say you you have Sam's um, up level program, or you have his consulting uh, consulting. I, I purchased a consulting accelerator like five Accelerate. years ago. Go back in there. Go back, go, okay. go back, go back in and look at it. And a lot of stuff that you're learning from me and Austin, you're going to see us, you're going to see us look at it. It's the, it's the, it's the formula, brother. It's right. always a formula behind the, the, see, you just see the face brand KTR. You see speakerfocus.com. You see the initials KTR. You see, you see me delivering the content. You see me with the my, my suits on and the way I dress and my style and all that kind of stuff. But you got to look behind all of that stuff behind. I just followed the formula and then I poured my talent through the formula and I did not invent it or create it. Believe me. Yeah. And that's where I was going wrong. So I'm glad for this clarification. I was trying to reinvent the wheel and do things in a way that I thought I knew better, yeah, but it wasn't out of spite. 
Right. It wasn't out of spite towards anybody. It was just uh, I needed to ask this question to get the truth and to get all the real. And now I'm locked in is what I'm saying. Get about all <laughs> I'm ready. Stuff. And, and, and yeah. there's a reason. Let me, let me say this to you, too, because you're, you're getting ready to get to the point where you're starting to do outreach. When your sales right. funnel is not put together the right way, it's not going to convert. Mm -hmm. And if it's not converting, it means that you're horrible at running ads. If you are horrible at running ads and it's not converting into revenue, you need to be submitting support tickets. And then Austin will break down every single thing you're doing to, to get it to convert into revenue. Okay. This, is, it, 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 this is not for special people. This is for people to understand that formula. And when you follow it to the letter and you do exactly what you're supposed to do, it starts converting into revenue. And it just doesn't work with speaking. It yeah. works with everything. Okay. Yeah, that's that's the it works with any it works with anything yeah. you're trying to sell. That you gotta be good at marketing. If I have if I had to give advice to a person starting a business, the first thing I would tell them is you need to have a marketing plan first. And how much money can you spend for your marketing and your marketing budget? Because if you can't attract customers, you're not gonna make any money. And that's what we're showing you how to do. You the money is there to make Rafa and everybody else, but you have to build it out the right way first. So get your infrastructure together. Tanta, yeah. nice to see you back on the call. Tanta said, thanks for the heat. Yep, punched in your face. Yeah, I've been punched in my face a whole lot. You gotta be, you, you gotta stop being afraid to get beat up. You gotta stop being afraid to fail. You're not gonna get this shit right off the break. You should be, you should be figuring out a way to make as many mistakes as you can in the first quarter with your speaker business so you can dominate in the second quarter. That's what you need to be thinking about. See, nobody else is gonna tell you that because they want you to tell a cute story. Fuck your cute story. That is not the only thing that puts money in the bank. That helps. Right. But the fluffy era of motivational speaking is over. And those who want to participate in that, mark my words, you are going to suffer mightily. The ones who have their business prepared to go next level, those are the ones that's going to get the lion's share of revenue in this industry. This is not for the faint of heart. You need to be trying to figure out a way to ramp it up. You need to figure out a way to get more haters. You need to figure out a way to piss more people off. You need to figure out a way to be more disruptive. <laughs> the problem with a lot of you is that you, 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 you're trying to make everybody happy. Why don't you try making right. yourself happy? Right. Why, 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 don't, why don't you start figuring out a way to do something that's going to make you happy? Whatever way you've been doing it, if you weren't getting some positive results in the years prior to, you need to be thinking about shaking some shit up and doing something different. Rafa, was that, the, was that your only question? Or was that your last mm -hmm. question? Man, that's facts. That's my last question. Nothing but hugs and love, bro. Thank you so much. You're the best. The Rafa, best. Rafa, only show the soft side to the baby and Amy. Everybody else, pay me my money. All right? I'll talk to you real soon. Sounds great, bro. Love you, man. Right, Thank bro. you. I, I'm, I'm going to see you in the first quarter, too. All right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like I'm talking about face-to-face, -face, for real. All right? Man, I'm, I've been waiting for the day. I'm ready for you. No doubt, Let's no doubt. It. I, I, I got to come check out your, your operation out there anyway. So I, I got some other business I got to take care of. So I'm going to see you real soon. All right, I'm with you. Okay, boss. Talk to you. All right. All right peace. All right, let me see. Uh, Anita, thank you so much for being patient. Oh, Anita, thank are you? you. Yeah, happy 2022 to you in Austin. Well, to the Speech of Focus family as well. <laughs> hey, happy, happy 2022, Anita. Nice to, uh, it's nice to, it's just nice to be here. Nice to be here and and be uh, providing a, a great level of service and hearing your voice again. How are you? I am doing my best. You know, um, I'm going through it, but I am doing my best to keep doing my best. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, um, what I want um, before I get into my question, I want to piggyback off um, what you and Rafa was talking about in regards to learning the modules by heart through repetition. Okay. Um, Cause right now, and that's why I say I'm going through it because my production on my video, you know, I have someone working on my video. It seems like it's taking uh, a while because of the holidays. So okay. um, I'm having to be patient with this person because they're working with me financially <coughs> to make my dreams come true. Okay. Um, but in the meantime, while I'm waiting on them, to do that, I've been going back and forth, back and forth through all of the um, modules. I even go, I go all the way down to uh, chapter five, but coming back when it speaks about marketing, 
just back in November, I started with a new um, financial service company. And I, I'm relating this because the things that I was learning in module two and three about marketing, I'm like, oh my gosh. Uh, when I got with this company, I am learning the same thing just with a different company's name. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, uh, I, I, I feel like, you know how you feel like you're being guided, like something is guiding you uh, to your purpose? It's as if what I'm learning in module two, three, and four, it's like I'm putting it to practice with another company. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And when you speak about, because they talk about, you know, you tell your story, but, you know, to be able to relate to people. You right. know? And also, you, ha you have to be ready with a presentation as well. You have, to, you have to know how to present, and then you got to know how to negotiate with people. It, the approach dealing with objections and rejections. Yep. I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, I'm already learning this. <laughs> yeah, that's, and watch this. So you have, so the, the way we teach you at speakerfocus.com, this is about management of the sales cycle from contact to close. Exactly. There, there, there's a process and most speakers or most people in sales, they don't understand about sales funnels. They don't understand about sales cycles. Uh, Dr. Anissa, I'll be right with you. Uh, thank you so much for your patience. I just saw your hand go up. So uh, as soon as I finish with Anita's question and we finish dialoguing, I'll be right with you. Um, so uh, so the, the key is, well, I saw her hand up at least, so she took it down. Anyway, um, <clears throat> um, oh, oh, there it is, it's back up, okay. All right, so, so think about it like this. Sales cycle management, is vitally important to you closing someone that we have a lot of people i mean we run through i mean i'm talking about thousands and thousands of leads every single month obviously i don't close all of them some people aren't a good fit some people the timing isn't right for them sometimes they have too much going on sometimes there's a budget issue sometimes people need a payment plan it's a whole bunch of stuff but the key is that you have to, you're right. You got to be able to manage objections. The bottom line is you don't, you want to be so skilled at sales that the prospect is not making you feel uncomfortable. I'm in total control when I'm on the phone with the prospect. I'm the one with all the knowledge. You're the one with the, watch this. This is, this is, this is my mindset, Anita. This is need, this needs to be your mindset. You have exactly what the prospect is looking for. They just don't realize it. This is where the presentation comes in. Remember, selling is not convincing anybody of anything. Most people try to convince you. I'm not trying to convince you of shit. Exactly. I already know I got the world's number one platform for speaker <laughs> marketing. I already know I have the packaging. I already know. So my mindset is you're the one with the broke down speaker business. I know exactly how that feels like. I'm the one who can make you feel empowered so your speaker business can grow. So who has the advantage? The one scheduling the call with me or, or me with the knowledge? Who has the advantage? Me with the knowledge. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, so, so therefore, you have the advantage with your prospect. You're the one that has, uh, um, has, a, has a product, a financial product, a, um, a um, estate management product that is going to help them feel more secure as a family. So, so, so the resistance is, and I've had plenty of wealth management experts and they, they all come out the woodwork trying to manage, manage our money. It, it always happens. It's been happening to me for years. So the key is, is it feels uncomfortable when you got to start telling somebody about your financial position. Most people don't like it. So if you come off too pushy, if you don't have something about you that's likable, you're not going to get any information. You're not going to you're not going to get that person to let you plan their estate, buy insurance from you or anything else. So you've got to have a really really strong presentation. It doesn't need to sound like you're selling. Exactly. You're not trying to convince them of anything. You're positioning the brand and you're presenting the facts. The people that know how to do that the best, Anita, are the ones who are closers 
and the ones who make the most revenue. That's yeah. why we provide sales cycle training for you to walk you throughout the entire process and how to have the proper pricing conversation, just like how you just saw me run through it with Ed Babcock. That's how you're supposed to be talking to the meeting planner. And if you're not, that means the meeting planner is in control of the sales cycle and you're and you're not. Exactly. Oh, this is so this is so beautiful. You know, I got to see you and Austin's praises because it's like what you uh, I think it's you was explaining to Ed. You got to be like a doctor. You know, you got to first find out yes. what they need. What's the problem so that you can solve it? Ask questions first. And ask questions. And even if they, and what I also learned is even if they come with you with a question, you got to question them back, you know, because then that lets you know uh, who's in control because the person with the question is usually the one who's in control, but it leads, it leads to, um, it leads to this. I truly feel like this is my purpose. Like I said, uh, at the beginning, like, um, at first, um, you know, I thought I was like having it hard. I'm going through it. And sometimes you got to step back. Sometimes the tears flow and sometimes the tears got to flow to relieve the pressure, to give you um, the energy to think, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You release right. the tears and then you're able to sit back and see things. And when you, you've always told me, don't rush, there's no need to rush. And now I get it. I get it yep. because I see, it's like you see a pattern. I know me, when I studied um, neuro-linguistic programming is all about um, understanding patterns. And I've gotten to that point now where I see patterns. So my question to you with all of that um, to the side and mm -hmm. with me saying that, um, cause I remember you saying in the last class that you um, taught before the holidays, you said, you know, a lot of you don't even have your website together. And I'm like, you know, I've been studying and studying, but I didn't want to jump ahead. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to know if it's okay to put things, to set things in order, but still get the other stuff finished just to set it up while I finish up my video production. Yep. Yep. There's a, I, I heard a personal trainer say this to me one time, I'll use another analogy. They said, if you have an injury, he said, there's a thousand, he's like, people are like, okay, I got an injury. Well, that means I can't work out. Well, that's not true. Let's say you got a broken ankle. Then he said, there's a literally a thousand exercises you can do around that broken ankle while you're waiting on the ankle to heal. So while you're waiting on your speaker video demo to get done right now, you could still be working on your speaker info kit. You could have the graphic designer working on that. You could have... You could have your sales tools being designed. You could you could add this stuff to your website if you want to use our template. There's all kinds of things that you could be doing to your speaker business while you're waiting for your LLC to get set up. You should always be working on something all the time. The bottom line is some of you are not in the habit of feeling uncomfortable all the time. You want to feel uncomfortable on the group call. You know, KTR kicks a little ass and you want to go in and do a little something and then you go right back to feeling comfortable. You got to make your ass should be feeling uncomfortable all the time. That means you're getting shit done. Okay. It's not a day that goes by where I feel comfortable. This shit is hard. Yeah, We're working hundred million dollars. Yeah, because I didn't want to jump the gun, even though I know- It's not jumping the gun. It's okay, to, it's okay to flip flop around back and forth, jump around while you're waiting on something else. Don't just, don't just let the grass grow up under your feet and hold your breath while you're waiting on it. And by the way, the graphic designer, you need a hard deadline. See, a deadline is a forcing system of accountability. When do you think, th this, is how I, this is how I talk to all my production people. When do you think without causing too much pressure on you, when do you think I could get a hard deadline on a completion day for my project? Based upon everything you got going on right now, when, when do you think? Two weeks, three weeks, a week, what? Oh, I think, I, Anita, I probably can get that done for you. No, not probably, because I've already been waiting 45 days. When are you going to get my project done? If they give you a hard deadline, let's say I, I can get it done in 10 days. See, you keep blowing up their phone and calling them. They're going to get tired of you calling them, especially if you got a, a deposit on it. Put some pressure on them. Make them deliver. That's what providing well, service to people is all about. 
I got everything in place. It's just that demo video. And then I got to do the training video and then everything else. I just have to just upload it to the website. Okay. That's well, about yeah. it because like I said, I've been, um, I've been studying and, and um, going through my studies, all of the chapters and everything. And I just got so anxious and I was like, I hope I'm not jumping the gun when I start on the uh, website. So all I need now, I just wanted to put the website, get that set up. So all I need to do is just upload everything once okay. you approve it. Okay. So send it over to me. Keep us informed. Keep the pressure on your production people and, 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 and get them to give up the services. The bottom line, especially if you're paying for it, you got to be able to move on to another level. You know, you don't, you're not going to get any extra points from me if all the work is not done. It's my responsibility to make sure you're ready to do outreach and, and have your speaker business prepared to do business with the meeting planner and the chair board or committee member who's going to be booking you to speak. And if that's not right, it's not right. And if it's not right, you need to get it right. Gotcha. I can't do the work for you. I'm doing my part. You got to do your part. You got to communicate with these production people. I, I am glad to hear that a lot of overlapping things that you're learning uh, in, in the real world, you're putting this into, into application in the real world and that you're getting something from the sales cycle. It only gets better from here. But remember, don't look forward to feel comfortable all the time. This is blood, sweat, and tears. Now, eventually, it's going to start feeling a little bit better once you get, once you get all of the, the tools together that you need for your speaker business. Again, to do the outreach with the coordinator, remember the value that you told me. You're going to be in control, not the meeting planner. Exactly, exactly. Like, I, so, hey, listen, I got way too much skill and I don't have the time. So for somebody to think that they're going to try to out negotiate me in my field of expertise, you got to be out your mind. That's how good you got to be in negotiating. That's how good you got to be at having the pricing conversation. That's how good you got to be at managing the sales cycle. And let me tell you something. Turn the heat up on asses right now. Get my shit done so I can move on to the next stage. This ain't about people liking you. Gotcha. Anita, you hearing what I'm saying? I'm loud and clear. Lean on the video, the video editor. And if, and if they, if they drag and they ask, go to somebody else. Believe me, plenty of people out here want to make money and want to prove to you that they can get your project done. Plenty. Keep me, keep me informed. You got another question? Um, just one last question. It might be for um, Austin, but I was trying to figure out how to mm -hmm. review the training video that you got just to see um, how you want us to put our training video together. You talking about the, talking about the VSL? Yeah, the, where it's on your uh, website, the training. Oh, you, can, you, can, you, can go to, you can go to Vimeo and you can, you can type in um, KTR speaker training video. Okay. And you'll see it on Vimeo. All right, got it. That's you it. it you can pull it up from there. That's it. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay, Anita. Happy 2022 to you. Keep your head down and keep going hard. Okay, let me, uh, let me mute this. Let me go to Dr. Anissa. Disable talking. Dr. Anissa, talk to me. Hey, how are you? Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Nice to have you back on the platform. How have you been? Uh, I've been under the weather, uh, mentally and physically. Had two uh -huh. deaths in my family back to back, and I'm bouncing back. Okay, well, what we got to do to get you back on track? What's your question this evening? Uh, well, after I did up to a certain level, I did, you know, turn it in, and you said, you know, or either Austin said, go back and redo some stuff and whatnot. Yes. Um, and I finally instead. Of, Okay, doing it from a desktop works wonder and get off your phone. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I listened to all the videos, but when it got time to actually seeing stuff, uh, the actually templates, I did not see them by on the phone. But yeah. when I got on my desktop, I seen that there were templates and it showed more in depth because you, you know, I remember an email you sent, kept saying, well, look at the templates, it's, you know, step by step. And I'm like, this is not, it's not here. What is he talking about? So I finally found it and seen okay. it. Okay. And I don't know if my brain is just shut off. I need a 
good kick, swift kick in the tail or what. Mm -hmm. I'm like stuck like Chuck. Okay. All right. So, okay. And I was so. wondering, maybe I do, I need to hire somebody to help me. I have all this in my head and I'm, and I have like thousands of sheets of paper and my notebook is just crammed with stuff. Okay. And all right, I'm not minute. making no sense here. No, no, no. Wait a minute. No, no, you, no, you make a sense. First of all, this is why you invested in yourself and you hired us to help you with these kind of with these kind of challenges. Now, are you telling me that you have a, a technical challenge, a computer challenge, you're having trouble downloading documents? Let's pinpoint with accuracy what it is you're struggling with, and then let's see if we can help you out with it first. Anything pertaining to technology, I guarantee you submit a support ticket. Me and Austin, we're going to work you through it first before you spend any other money trying to hire somebody else. So right. what is it specific that you're struggling with? Well, it's not, not, not nothing technically other than in my brain. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we can deal with that. We can deal with that too. Okay, and, and watch great. this. You remember, you're on a platform that's non judgmental. I'm okay. here to build a bridge from where you are right now versus where you want to go. You are not the only one who is struggling with challenges, deficiencies, setbacks, sick family members, COVID. Uh, we got from cancer, we got all kinds, our students are struggling with everyday life. Soon as I get off this Zoom session, we all got to go back to our regular lives and we all have, so, so this is what I want you to think about. Management is the word you need to be focusing on. Right now, Anissa, you have too much going on. You got to simplify. The fact that you got a thousand sheets of paper is telling me that your thoughts are going in a thousand different directions. So what is going to be your focus this year? Real focus is concentrating on one thing at a time. So to, to get you back on track with the coaching, I'll go back and pull some support tickets that you sent. I believe you, we, we were, we left off with your messaging last I can remember. Yes. And I'm still so, on that. And okay. I went a thousand different ways. Cause I, I, what I did is and I think I may be overthinking it or what have you. Okay, I have my book. I wrote a book. I wrote several books. Uh, but the one that I want to do my title is a more holistic strategic, uh, a more strategic holistic life. Okay. And so that's what my, I guess my mainstay headline is going to be and build my signature programs from that. Because if you don't have a strategy, you're not really going nowhere because you got the plan somehow. You're going to plan to fail or plans to succeed. And so that's where I'm getting stuck at with, I go back and I look at what you're asking for is your outcome and your this and your that. And I'm like, right. I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I know, but I don't know. Okay. All right. Well, well watch this. Watch this. Okay. So let's, let's start with, do you have some of your notes in front of you or the signature program template. Yes. Okay. So I remember your, so your mainstay headline should be five words. What is that? What did you have written down? Refresh my memory. I, okay. Um, I have, see, specialty st strategics that optimize goals. Okay. Specialty, specialty strategics that optimize the goals. Okay. You need to have five words. That's too many words. Okay, one, two, three. Yeah, so, that's fine. Is, is it five? Yeah. Specialty, say it again. Specialty strategic, strategy, excuse me, specialty strategies that optimize goals. Okay, optimize goals. Okay. In the, fir the first word should be, you should identify as a leadership or an empowerment speaker. Or if, okay. you're, if you're a specialty speaker, you could do... Um, uh, you, you said something about holistic, correct? Yeah, I am. Yes, I'm a naturopathic doctor. Okay, okay. So watch this. You could do holistic approaches that do what? Give me those last two words again. Optimize goals. Holistic approaches that optimize goals. You see what I just did? Uh-huh. That's just an idea of what you can do because that's the lane that you're in. Holistic approaches that optimize goals. And so with that being said, for people that are trying to get more on the natural level, 
Mm -hmm. with the meditation and whatnot, mm -hmm. even in business or whatever you're in, you still, these, these approaches still can, you know, venture either way you go in life. Exactly. It's not just for a person just only meditate or a person just only juices, a person that does whatever. Okay. So, so remember, so if you had to define the type of deliverable that you have, what would that be? Would it be holistic? Would it be natural? What is it? How would you describe it? Well, just give it to me in one sentence. How would you describe it? I would say holistic. Okay. So if you're going to go holistic base, you, all of your signature programs need to be holistic base. Natural based holistics. Watch this leadership based holistics. There's all kinds of ways that you can go. What's okay. a, what, what's another, see, again, typically I would say make all your signature programs leadership based, but you are a doctor. You earn that professional distinction. So you could do all of your holistic based approaches. All of your signature programs need to, need to be holistic based. Now, what is it that you teach? Give me some of the main things that you teach, because we need four of those signature programs, all based upon, all based upon the around the word holistic. So you just talked about natural, right? Yes, I talk about natural, I talk about healthy. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, stop, okay. stop for a second. Let's take it one at a time. So okay. one, one, of, one of your signature, and I'm just trying to give you ideas so you could like upgrade your marketing language and then send it over to me with the opening paragraphs and the bullets. You could do natural based holistic, natural based holistics. That could be signature program number one. What's something else that's near and dear to your heart that you want people to know about? You want them, we're in a broken global workforce. We're in a mental health crisis caused by the pandemic. What is it that you want people to know about? Nutrition. Well, nutrition. Healthy life, yeah, on a healthier nutri lifestyle. Nutrition-based holistics. Nutritional-based holistics. Okay. All right, natural, nutrition. What's another one that you have? What's something else that's near and dear to your heart? Tell me what I'm supposed to be doing to get more centered, to have more energy, to be more aligned. What, what is it that you want me to do in your practice, in your ideology, your methodology, your approach? How do you want me to become better? Give me the how-to. You change your, your, your way of living, how you view your viewpoint far as you have to change your mindset over to instead of going out, eating all this junk. You have ding, to ding, 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 right there. Stop right there. Uh, uh, Anissa, watch this. Mindset-based holistics. Okay. You see what I'm doing? Okay. I'm taking everything you're saying. This is the way you teach. This is the way you transfer knowledge. You need to take the very best of the basic advice that you give to people every single day. See, sometimes we're doing too much. Your, okay. listen, your mindset is on a 100. We need to slow that mind the way you, you, you're speedballing. You're all over the place. You, real focus is concentrating on one thing at a time. Eliminate everything in your life, Anissa, that does not serve you or uplift you. You got to get rid of, you're giving too much. You got to stop being more selfish. This is about you. Stop giving so much to everybody else and focus on you. That's where you're going to find the very best of who you are in your signature programs. And all, okay. of, all of it is wrapped around the holistic approach that you have to life. So give me those, again, those three holistic-based programs or what again? Natural, Natural, nutrition, and mindset. Mindset. Okay, give me something else that really feels, what is it that you feel like we're not able to do as leaders. What is it that you feel like these people are not able to do because of a sedentary lifestyle that they have? How are we, how are we all messed up right now? And how do you want to help fix that? What is that? How would you describe that? Oh, they're not, they're not focused enough on themselves, like what you just told me. Mm -hmm. they're, 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 they're scattered. Because when people come in, they're everywhere uh, on taking all these um, different um, adulterized um, vitamins. That's when I say adulterized, mean they're synthetic. They're mm. not. Your body is not geared towards 
knowing what to do with synthetic stuff. It's geared towards what to do with whole foods. The natural stuff. Okay. All right. So, so watch this. Would you, would you say that you create more custom based solutions for your clients yeah. or in the, like individual, all of them are individual? Based? Yeah. All of them are individual and customized. Each person that comes in is not one protocol. It's the same exact as another person's. Okay. So guess what? Why don't you do custom based holistics? Okay. I'm the best you've ever seen. This is too easy for me. See, you got to stop thinking so much and simplify. You already got the signature programs right there. That's exactly what you should be doing. That's who you are. When I ask you these direct questions, do you see how when I ask you them questions, you didn't even have to think about it? Guess what? Because you got so much research knowledge because you are a doctor in this particular field. And you hit the recall button when I ask you the question and the resources popped up just like that. You didn't even have to think about it. Dr. Anissa, this is what I want you to do. I want you to be who you are. This is your gift to the world. You have to stop overanalyzing and make all of your signature programs holistic based, natural, mindset, custom based, holistic. You got your four signature programs. If I were you, I would just go running with that. Now go back in and read the signature program template, create the opening paragraphs and the bullets. I believe that the way you were phrasing your bullets, they were in first person. I wanted you to put them in third person. The bullets were a little bit thin and you needed to just work on them a little bit, but it wasn't all the way horrible. And I said that to you in my notes. I'm gonna go back, send, send, me, send me the upgraded signature programs and let me take a look at it again. Don't think about anything else in this program other than getting your messaging. We got to get your messaging right first. And believe me, we are not far away. Is this helping you at all? Yes, yes. You made it. You made it. Oh, God. Okay, you said put it in. What did you say? Put in what type of person? Second person? No, it's third person. You should put third it in third person. person. In, in other words, in other words, um, you know, like for natural based. Uh, uh, what is that called again? Natural based what? Holistics. Yes, natural based holistic. Yeah. So for natural based holistics, learn how to live a more plant based lifestyle and uh, create more energy. Okay. That's the third person. Okay. See, instead of saying, uh, I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that, you don't want to put it in first person. You want to give the value. When the meeting planner reads that bullet, you could, they got to be able to understand the key takeaway. They got to understand how you're going to help them achieve their desired outcome or their learning objective. How are you going to get me to be more natural? Talk to me about that when you write the bullet. Go back in and, and look at the signature program template. Read the opening paragraph and the way they're supposed to be written and then get give it your best effort. Don't try to get it perfect. So you got to employ some relaxed control. Your problem is you're, you're sitting there not doing anything because you're trying to get it perfect. Abandon perfectionism. All it's doing is getting in your way. I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to help you. Whatever okay. it is that you send to me, I am not going to tear it down. I'm giving you constructive criticism so you can have the best signature programs in your space in the world. And then we can move on to the next thing. So the only thing I want you focusing on right now are the upgraded upgrades for your signature programs send those over to support at speakerfocus.com. Let's take a look at that first. And then I want you personally, I want you to get rid of anything that is not helping support your signature programs and any other business that you have that's making money. If it's not supporting that, or if it's not something pertaining to your family or the top priorities in your life, it's got to go. I'm talking TV, extra friends, family members, anybody, anybody, anything that is not helping you like this, they got to go. Period. Yes. You're being too nice. I've been there before. I know exactly the type of person that you are. You're taking it easy on people who don't even deserve it, but yet nobody's standing up for you. You need to be spending more time on this platform, submitting more support tickets. You need to be trying to keep me as close to you as possible right now until you get your speaker business all the way. You need the confidence that you can do this. And I hope that I gave you more of that tonight. Yes, you did. And I appreciate you. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. You're very welcome. Did you have any other questions? No, sir. That's it. Okay, listen, we believe in you and we love you. Submit submit that signature program, up the updates to me and let's go from there, okay? Okay, will do. Dr. Anissa, one thing at a time, one day at a time, okay? Okay. Talk to you real soon. All righty.
All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be bringing the we're going to be bringing the Q and A call to a close. I don't see any other hands up, but I do appreciate uh, Wayne. Thank you for the comment there. Wayne says, "KTR, you such a patient, focused people builder." Well, my mother taught me how to be a gentleman, and when you're serving other people, you cannot be thinking about you. You got to listen to people. You got to for every every one of you got something different going on, and it's my job to stay in tune with it. And, and, and not to judge you. Believe me, I got a whole lot of shit going on my, myself personally right now. I have, I have other mentors that are holding me accountable right now. I have assignments I have to get done. I have things I need to get done. I got, I got partners I need to keep happy. I got a family I need to keep happy. And believe me, none of it's easy. None of it's easy. I, I, you, you cannot look for the easy way out. Uh, Tanta, it's no problem if, if you got to go. Um, this is why we record it. So this, this uh, Austin will probably have the Q&A call up in uh, probably a day or two. And then you can go back and you can listen to all these golden nuggets. Ladies and gentlemen, I am going to end the group Monday Q&A call on the speakerfocus.com platform by saying this, is that we are into a brand new year. This is our first Q&A call of the year. And we're gonna end this the way we uh, the way we we're gonna end this the way we ended last year. We're gonna end it powerfully, and we're gonna start it off on a good note. It doesn't matter where you are right now. It doesn't matter how horrible you feel about what you feel like you've done or not done, about what you have accomplished or haven't accomplished, about the sales tools that you haven't done, about the messaging that you haven't done. You know, stop beating yourself up. Get in an energy where you are doing work. Take action. Replace all these minuscule ideas that you have in your head. Stop belittling yourself. Stop beating yourself up. Stop giving so much of the very best of you to other people who don't even deserve it and start being selfish in a positive way. That's what you should start doing because you are not going to be capable of delivering service at a high level unless you got your shit wired tight all the way across the board. And if you don't have it wired tight, that's okay. Welcome to the club. I've been, let me tell you something. I have been dealing with emotional instability more than I have in the last two years than I ever have over the last 20 years. And it's all because of when you're trying to ramp up your goals to a whole nother level, everybody and everything is going to come out the woodwork and start attacking your ass. And that's just the way it is. They're coming for you because they know that you got goodness inside of you. They know that you're ramping it up. They know you got bigger goals. Bigger goals require you to have a bigger bat to beat down bigger problems. And if you don't understand that by now, you're in trouble. I'm not looking forward to feel comfortable. I'm looking forward to be very uncomfortable in the beginning because the more uncomfortable it is going to be the bigger the reward. Now, eventually it's going to start feeling more comfortable as you go down the line. Oh, I see my man, Jonathan King. I got to get Jonathan here before we end the, um, the Q and A. Jonathan, talk to me, brother. Hey, big shout out to you, KTR and Austin and uh, Speaker Focus family. It's so hey, great to be back. It's so great to be back. Miss you guys, man. I wanted to meet last Monday. That's how bad I want to meet you guys, man. I know. Hey, hey, listen, man. I, hey, JK, I, I miss you as well, bro. And listen, I, I, um, I'm not sure if the question that you have is is wrapped around your email for the college market, brother. But it was it was super professional. I understand you got a hit on it. Can't wait to hear about the progress. But what's your question before we get out of okay, here? Okay, this is gonna be real short and Take sweet. Take your time. Take your time, JK. Take but your time. This is what's going on. Okay, so I sent out all those emails to colleges in California, Oregon. Okay. And then this one lady at Napa Valley said, "Okay, we want you to come and speak." So she's over. Um, I, what's it called, the Emoja program. And okay. she said, how much is your honorarium? We want to mm -hmm. see if we can afford you. Right. And now this has to go to the VP. She said, the VP is not coming back until tomorrow. Can okay. you send me information, all the specifics on how much you charge, the time, the date, you know, and on down the line. Right. So I sent her an email and said, can we talk about this so I can find out what your needs are? Mm -hmm. And then I can tell you how much, you know, I'll charge you. Right. Okay, now nothing but crickets. Okay. So 
I didn't want to respond to her until I got your feedback on, should I try to call her tomorrow or should I just put together a contract and send it to her and say, this is what oh. I charge? Because I'm thinking that it should be anywhere between uh, like three to $5,000. I would okay. prefer to say 5,000 and mm -hmm. then work my way down if she says, well, we can't afford you. Okay, now. What is, your, what is your take on that? Okay, you're right to think that. First of all, let's, let's analyze your deal, right? Each one of these deals have characteristics and it's your job to analyze the characteristics, share the characteristics of your deal and your interaction with the meeting planner so we can help you get it to a point where, where you wanna close it. Let's go to the money. First of all, is it a, is it a uh, divinity school, community college, division it's a community one, college. two or three? It's community it's a college. It's community college, yeah. Okay. And, and so she said, um, she said something to the effect of, well- um, They don't have bigger budgets. Right. She said something to the effect of, um, can you come here directly face to face or maybe we should do it online? So it seems to me it's open right now to whether it should be online or face to face. But I'm thinking that they're leaning toward an online, you okay. know, virtual uh, presentation. OK, listen to this carefully. Community colleges, divinity schools and the smaller, especially historical black colleges. It's about 140 something historical black colleges uh, throughout the country those are the ones that's going to put a cap on you around a thousand to two thousand dollars they simply oh, don't have the budget or the bandwidth to pay more they don't now if that's not a long drive for you then maybe you want to go out you want to dip your straw you know in that in that pond and then you know see what it tastes like and you know that's okay if if you if you just want to do one as long as you're not doing it for free if you, you can go over there, you can get it recorded, you know, you can you can start tweaking on your working on your presentation. See, there's a there's, there's times when I want you to get out there and take what you can get so you can understand how the game works. And you can't learn how the game works by sitting on your ass on the couch, right? So I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm telling you when you if you if you were on the session in the beginning and you heard me consult Ed Babcock about the speaker negotiated menu, then you heard it. If not, go to about 18 or 20 minutes into this Q&A and I start getting in to how to negotiate with the speaker negotiated menu if you have to take less. A smaller community college is not gonna have a budget. Now, when you start getting into division ones, always have the bigger budget. Dukes, U UCLA, USC, all those Southern California schools, Southern California is like North Carolina. They have, a, they have a large concentration of colleges in one area. Southern California and, no, and North Carolina, man, it's a college like a damn 7-Eleven. It's one on every corner, right? So you can literally do a tour of the colleges. And I believe that that's what your plan was. You sent out an email to like 40 to 60 colleges. Is that correct? Right, right. Just in, the, just in your area. So think about the the bigger colleges have the bigger budgets they may you they may be able to go up to 4000 without you really stressing them maybe 5k it depends on it is like a UCLA or something like that they they may have a, a bigger budget as long as you know you can bring the guns and you have a a leadership program that will enhance campus life remember that the budget from the colleges comes from the at student activity fee and the student activity fee it's mandatory that all the students pay that. So that is going to cover bringing in a speaker, clowns, bands, jugglers, illusionists, hypnotists. All of this stuff is, is mandated and that's how they pay your fee. So they got the budget. There ain't no question about that. Now, let's get to you managing your relationship with them. I will place a call and I would definitely do a follow-up. You're not to the point yet where you're ready to send them over a speaker engagement agreement because you don't have enough information. Right. Now, this is not unusual that the meeting planner goes ghost. When you reach out to them and talk to them, a lot of times some people don't have professional business decorum. And then another, a lot of other times they don't have enough information to reach back out to you. Maybe they're talking to the chair board or committee members. This is the thing that people have a difficult time with. Jonathan, is that they don't have the patience. They don't want to sit there and wait. While you're waiting, you should be doing other things with your speaker business. You don't want to rely on just one meeting planner at the same time. 
If you got a fish on the hook, you don't want to let them slip away. So what I do is, now, let me just back up. Have they sent you feedback? Have they responded to the email that you sent out? They have not. Okay. What, not. Which, which lead are you saying that you're engaged with right now? Okay. So she's the person who's the faculty member. She's a professor over the program. Okay. She definitely has some sway. But okay, the person who's going to approve it is, is the VP. Okay. Now, real quick, JK, did you talk to her or did you email her or text? It was all emails. It was all emails. We haven't talked face-to-face yet. Okay. Can you send me the line of email? Or you might've sent me one before, but can you send me the line of communication? Even if you got a sure copy can. and paste, even if you got a copy and paste every interaction so far, let me analyze that because th this is the thing when you're analyzing written communication. First of all, remember this, you do not have the communication advantage with the same sex. You do, however, have it with the opposite sex, provided you, you utilize the right kind of tonality, pitch, resonance, height, accuracy, cadence. You gotta be charming, which you are, professional, which you are. We don't gotta be flirty, but a, a, a woman simply does not stand a chance when I'm speaking to her on the phone, when I'm managing the sales cycle, period, okay? Because I know how to deal with any kind of scenario and any kind of person I'm speaking to, I don't care what generation you're from. I don't care if it's male, female. I don't care if it's a if it's a generation Xer, baby boomer, millennial, whatever. I got way too much skill. So the key is I want to analyze a written communication, and I can tell you exactly how to approach. See, communication is all in your approach. You want to be able to keep her close to you, but not look like you're desperate. And I'm gonna say the same thing to you as I said to Ed Babcock, you're way too professional for you to be in begging mode. If they don't want it, you just move on to the next. But you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna give a valiant effort and we're gonna, we're gonna communicate with them until you get an unequivocal no. See, the, what we gotta do right now is we gotta get to the yes or no as quickly as possible. Now you already opened up the door with a one of the decision makers, but it typically, when it comes to getting booked to speak, it's never one person mm -hmm. that makes a decision. It's always a chair, board, committee member, VP, head of student faculty, um, head of leadership development. It's always somebody. They're all going to talk to each other. And that's why you got to have them sales tools, JK. That's why you did the website. That's why you did the speaker video demo. Because what they're going to do, the person is opening up the door for you right now. They're going to forward it over to somebody else. And they're going to say, hey, look, I got this guy, Jonathan King, he just keeps calling me. You know, the guy seems like he's pretty professional. They got something coming up. Remember, here's three things that we need to do on a follow-up email. You need to find out, no, four things. I apologize. Number one, find out if what you sent to them actually has some value. And you might want to just ask them straight up. Your point of contact, you might want to say, hey, the, the follow-up email, could you just give me your thoughts about it? Don't ask them for the booking. We're not there yet. Just ask mm -hmm, them what mm -hmm. they thought about the email. Right. Get get them engaged. Get their opinion. Oh, Jonathan, we do, did you look at the speaker? Did you look at the uh, speaker focused demonstration video? Do you feel like one of my signature programs will be a good fit to enhance campus life? See, these are the kind of words you got to say to them because they're looking for a signature program that's going to be great for the students. Now, once you say that first, then you can get into them asking them for the feedback and say, well, okay, well, I, well, I appreciate the feedback. Thank you. First of all, you want to hold them accountable to know that they looked at your shit because you don't, people will lie to you all day long. They'll blow you off and say, yeah, Jonathan, I got the email. No, 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 no. Did you, did you look at the speaker focused demonstration video? Because see, when they start telling me, oh yeah, Kevin, we like the such and such signature program. I know that you looked at it then. When you start telling me things about my sales tools, I know you looked at it. Now I'm feeling more confident about moving forward. I know you're not jerking me around. Don't let them waste your time, Jonathan. Got it. Now, secondly, after they give you some feedback about the sales tools, then you want to say, okay, well, you know, since you looked at the sales tools, what I'm looking to do, obviously, is bring one of my signature programs or bring some real value to your university. Would you have any events coming up that you think I may be a good fit for? Now you're asking them, do they have an event, whether or not it's on site or virtual? Let me tell you something about the college market. They can literally create an event and just pull it out of their ass. They may not have one on the calendar, but if they feel strongly enough about you, they'll open up their calendar right there on the spot. They'll be like, uh, 
yeah, we don't have a day, but guess what? I'm thinking about merging the faculty and staff into this training as well. Uh, Jonathan, are you available the 17th of April? Boom, sure am. Okay, boom. Okay, well, I'm looking at the 17th of April. Then do they have a venue, a date, and then a venue for you to speak? You talked about it. Are they talking about doing it virtual or are they talking about doing it on site? What are they more comfortable with right now, JK? You have to make that assessment. And, and are you comfortable with doing an engagement on site? Whether or not you're vaccinated or not, you gotta, you gotta weigh the odds. See, communication is negotiation. So to keep communicating with them, keep them close to you and keep negotiating. Then the last thing is gonna be the budget. I want 5K. Well, Jonathan, that's simply gonna be out of the budget. We're a small community college, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I get it. I understand. I know that was probably a stretch. However, I do wanna be able to serve your university. And this is right around the corner for me. See, if you don't need to fly, driving in the car 45 minutes away, picking up $2,000 is nothing. Mm -hmm. You know how many times I've done that? Mm -hmm. For an hour? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You tell me where else you're going to go make $2,000 unless you're slinging some crack. And I don't do that anymore, JK. Okay. Right, right, right. So besides that, you, you that's, that's still a nice haul to get your feet wet, get some video footage, build a relationship, have three other people in the audience say, hey, listen, we saw this gentleman, Jonathan King, he came to here and crushed it. He was talking about diversity and inclusion. Oh my God, we need to hire him. That's how it works. That's how you keep the machine going, baby. Am I making sense to you? Making sense. I'm calling first thing tomorrow morning, brother, because of this. I'm, I, I did. I felt funny with the idea of sending some kind of contract. No, no, no. Don't I mean, do that. We're not at, there at yet. this stage in the game. So I'm, I'm glad you told me to do it this way because I feel more comfortable over the phone. Yeah, I feel more comfortable getting yet. into the details over the phone and finding yes. out how they feel about it. Absolutely. So I'm Absolutely. doing that first thing tomorrow morning. I'm, I'm, oh, now, I'm now. running for her. No, J.K. Real quick, did you take enough notes for the outline that I told you? First thing we're going to do is we're going to we're going to do what? What's going to be your first plan of attack when you talk to her? What are you going to do? I'm going to find out about uh, the feedback that they there have from my signature programs. There you go. Feedback. That's number one. Any of How do you feel about that? For your sales tool. Did you, exactly. did you watch it? Exactly. Hold them accountable. Yes. We ain't, man, we don't allow people to waste our time around here at speakerfocus.com. Right. What's the, what's the other three things you're looking for? to let them know, uh, for, for, for you to know that they're serious about engaging you to speak. Three other things is to find out whether they want me to do it face-to-face uh, -face or virtually. Yes, this is, let's get real specific because we gotta, we gotta make sure we have the right terminology. You wanna make sure that they have a venue for you to speak. Right. That's the venue, that's right. virtual or on-site. Second thing, what's the second thing that you need? To know that this serious, you need a what? I don't know. You need a date. Okay, the date. Okay. Well, well, the date is, is 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 set up for Black History Month. Okay, fine. That's cool. Okay, well, That's the black. So that we're talking about we're talking about February first all the way to February twenty eighth. Okay, and you and so guess some, anywhere in that in that in that in that spectrum of time, I can do it. Okay, and it's not unusual for them to book you for multiple dates when you're doing a college. That's what you need to be going for. You right. need to have, maybe they could bring you in once a week. Maybe you could do a block booking. Maybe if they only have a budget of 2000, maybe you give them two dates for 2000, four dates for 1750. You see what I just that's, did? That sounds good. Yes. You can give them a little bit of a discount if, if I'm going to keep coming back because I'm getting another idea. check. That's a great idea. It's all in how you negotiate. Remember, get the feedback first, hold them accountable. Secondly, right. do you have a budget? Do you have a right. date to offer me? And do you have a venue for me to speak? I'm telling you right now, if 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 they if you hit all of those and they say, okay, Jonathan, you know what? We've heard enough. We want to engage you to speak. Okay, well, guess what? Now, listen to me carefully, JK, because the, the college market does not do 50% non-refundable. Non oh, they don't. No, they do not. Oh, shoot. It's going to be very rare that you're going to get a oh, college or university to send you the money up front. They have to get a purchase order cut. Now, they will have your money when you get on campus. That's the only right. drawback about doing a college date. Okay? They're probably are not going to give you a 
deposit. So don't look for it. But they will have, they're gonna, they're gonna have your check when you get on campus. You could ask, you could ask, but typically they don't do it. Now it's a community college, so they may run on a little bit different rules, but I doubt it. We got about 4,000 plus colleges throughout the United States and US Virgin Islands. Man, Most that's certainly really helpful. I was about to, I was thinking about sending that contract that you sent and it had that clause in there about breaking it up into two yes. payments, right? Yes. So now that you told me that, that's good. I, I'm not, you know, making yeah. a, a full pot. Okay. And listen, and listen, you don't want to be a prima donna speaker. Sometimes the rules are set up that way for a reason. It's okay. Just understand that that's one of those delayed gratifications. Just get that in your mind going in so we don't have to get all upset about that. And then once they say they have, okay, Jonathan, we want to engage you to speak. This is the date that we have for you. This is the venue. We want to do this on site for Black History Month. And then they also have, um, they have the budget and you agree to the budget. Right. Then you're going to send them over the speaker engagement agreement. Then you're going to send them over the pre-program questionnaire. Once you, once you get it locked in, get them to sign that agreement. That is the only thing that's ironclad to know that you're going to get your check. Fantastic. Get them to sign the agreement, but you got to have all the details in your agreement first. So before you put together your first one, always send it over to us and let me give it, to, let me give it to once over. I'll tell you if you're, if some of the, if the writer in your contract is weak, if, uh, if, if the verbiage in there is not great, remember that my attorney for the last 30 three, 34 years, actually, Ward White did the speaker engagement agreement. So it's a very sound legal document. You just got to swap out the information, put it in there. Sometimes with the college market, they may want you to use their agreement. And that's okay. Okay. Get them to sign your agreement. And also you sign theirs as well. Whatever, whatever they're, it's about making the, the it's about making the client feel comfortable. But I feel like you're, you're going real good right now. This is a great learning experience. Utilize each one of these as stepping stone and, and turn it into an opportunity and just keep us involved because as you can see, I could teach you how to negotiate every single point. And now you're going to go in stronger tomorrow as a result of it. So stay engaged. All right. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate that. Love you, man. Thank you. Love you too, man. Peace. All right. Unless somebody else puts their hand up, we are running 15 minutes over on the Monday Q&A call. I can tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, is that as you can see that I literally can talk about the speaking industry all day long. It's something that I love. And when you love it, you're going to, you're going to do work that is fulfilling. And when you do work that is fulfilling, I see Wayne's hand up. Uh, Wayne, talk to me, brother. <clears throat> yeah, coach. Uh, happy new year to you. And um, I appreciate you, man. You're the real deal. Got one. I got hey, a question. Did you, have, you have you seen um, uh, the, the things that I sent to you on, um, uh, we call it, in, in from from school. You you uploaded something in school. When when did you do it? Like at the end of last year? Uh, yeah, yeah. I okay. It was. I sent you. I tell you what it was. I sent. Let me find it. I'm I'm there on the site right now. It I sent a document or video or something. What was it? No, I sent you. Um. I've been in touch with a, a graphic artist. Okay. I used it. I used the template. I'm trying to find it. I used the template uh, for uh, that you that you had sent to me from um, uh, the, the the brother that that passed away in the motorcycle accident. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, David Patton. David Patton. I, yes. Okay. I used I used this template. I sent it to the graphic artist. Mm -hmm. They and I sent them my. Um, uh, the speaker info kit. I sent them the the uh, the whole whole thing so that he can work with the template and then make the whole thing. And so I, he sent me a, a draft of the uh, the brochure. And okay. And so I sent it to you. And I was just wondering. I I sent it to you on. Uh, let me see here. I'm trying to figure out where I can find it. I get lost on this thing here. Okay. I sent it to you in classroom. I guess. Yes, in the classroom section of wait, wait. the school platform, that's the private coaching group on uh, uh, on the speakerfocus.com platform. Wayne, any any remember, anything that you need, we always pay attention to support tickets first. That's the priority. Send it to support at speakerfocus.com. I think I might have done that too. Classes. 
Okay. I think okay. I think I might have done that too, but I'll resend it because I sent you a copy of the, the brochure uh -huh. and with my logo. And um, you know, I'm just knocking these things down one at a okay. time, as you know, as I can. Okay. And, but cool. I want your feedback on it. And um, I, and I know I have not yet. And, and here's something I, I just I guess I can't figure out why I just won't go live on. Uh, uh, we call on, on social media. All right. I know I, I got so much stuff that I want to say. I'm always writing. I got so much stuff I want to say. Um, Why don't you just say it, Wayne? <laughs> Why don't you just I know. Say it? In fact, I told my, I told my wife a few minutes ago. I'm going live tonight before I go to listen. Bed. Why don't why, exactly? Why don't you just Why don't you just press the button and hit live? Don't matter if you drop your phone, the phone's crooked, it doesn't matter. Let me tell you something. Once you go live once or twice, you'll you'll know how to do it. And yeah. then just start documenting. Just put your thoughts out there. Then point me to a link that I can go see it and then just keep getting better. See, Wayne, the problem with video is, is we, we look at ourselves and we're embarrassed about what we see. It, when I speak, it's what it, what you see is what you get. I'm not thinking about what other people are going to be thinking about me. Do they like my cap, my glasses, my shirt? I don't care. I'm a little scruffy tonight. I don't care. You listen to the words that's coming out of my mouth. Listen to the right, message. right. Listen to the. That's what's important. See, I got that's it. what's important. And and you are are just as authentic, and you're just as passionate about something in this world. And that's what you need to be. Man, you're missing out on a golden opportunity. To I know, bro. I know, a, I know. A, watch this. Wayne, you could be part of your legacy. You could you could be literally dropping videos every single day. For those of you who like to write, for all you old school people that like to write, that's cool. But start documenting. Documenting. Yeah, I even bought a, I bought a tell. I got a teleprompter. I bought a teleprompter app. I got See? it all set up here in my office. Yes. And I and and and, and I got docu I got content on it and everything. So I'm start ready. Start using it. Wayne, yes. what do you, what do you what do you think is going to happen when you get to about you drop about ten to twenty videos? You well, see not by that time, I hope I have the whole uh, uh, sales funnel set up so that people can start clicking on it and, and going to going to my website. The website's almost done too. I got all these things all set up. They're just about I'm I'm just about there. I just got to go through this the uh, 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 module five about four or five more times because I, I just got to hear it over and over again as I retain it. Just start documenting, Wayne. That's all you need to do. All and, right. And, and, and watch what starts to happen. What starts to happen is you start overcoming the fear of technology. You stop saying I what I can't do and you start doing. And then you start feeling less self-conscious about it because you don't want to go over there and press the button or the camera angle's not right. Hey, listen, I'm in my hotel right now and I and I, I picked the best backdrop that I could find. You know, <laughs> I, I, I honestly, I, I needed y'all to see me live for the first Q&A call just so you know I was okay. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we're all in it together. We're all fighting something. And sometimes we're not going to look at our best, Wayne, and, we, and, and your clients should not see you at your best all the time they need to see you fractured they need to see right, you right. they need True. to see you hurting they and but watch this they also need to see you mending and healing and putting yourself back together and still serving other people despite right the friction right. That's going on in your life we still have to wake up every single day no matter what our job is no matter what our purpose is we still have to serve other people and you do that Wayne every single day you wake up start documenting brother and don't worry about the way it looks believe me just like how you gotten better with this coaching program, you're going to get better at that. And, and look at it this way, Wayne. It's a new year. Man, you weren't documenting last year, but you'll start documenting this year. And yeah. You get better and better and better at it. And that's all we want you to do. I will. Com. All right. I will. I intend to. Okay. All right, coach. I appreciate you, man. Hey, man. Love and I you, will man. start. I will my start best to Carol, okay? This stuff very soon. Okay, bro. Give, give my all best right. to Carol, okay? I will. All right. Talk to you real soon. All right. Bless you, man. All right. Peace, man. You too. Okay. Well, that is, <laughs> I see people saying, man, KTR, I got to go. Uh, uh, don't worry about it. You can always catch the replay. And that's the good part about doing business with speakerfocus.com. Listen, everyone. Again, happy new year to all of you. You should have goals that scare the life out of you for this year. You should be thinking bigger. If you're thinking $120,000, 
for your speaker revenue, you should be doubling that. You should be tripling that. You, if you're thinking, oh, I'm not doing outreach right now, you should be trying to figure out a way to get into module number five and literally look at it and binge watch it like it is your favorite sitcom or television show or anything that you like on uh, to entertain you. This business and this educational journey that you're on, it is very entertaining. And that's why I keep the engagement high and I keep the energy high. But it's also, it's time for it to sink in on a whole nother level. Now, I'm respectfully requesting that you do something that you've never done before, that you put energy and effort in like you've never done before. It's time to start having a paradigm shift. Stop talking about what you can't do. Start talking about what you can do. Anything that does not uplift you, serve you, anything does not move the meter, you got to start being selfish in a positive way. Stop doing so much for so many that don't even give a damn about what you're doing. This speaking journey is a lonely path, but you do have support at speakerfocus.com. That's why we were designed and built specifically and uniquely for people like you who want to actually do the work. Don't worry about things that you haven't done. Don't beat yourself up about stuff that you didn't do last year. Last year is over. This last second is over. Yesterday is over. You are not promised tomorrow. So get the shit right today. Listen, on behalf of the staff at speakerfocus.com, I love you and I actually give a damn about your success. And that's just the way it's going to be. Learn to love it and get used to it because I'm going to give you more of what it is that I've always given you. And you can best believe that and take it to the bank. I love you and I see you next week. Same time, same place, everybody. Stay focused, all right?